Hello, everyone. How are you all doing today? <laughs> oh, man. I'm tired. It's been a long weekend. It's been it's been a long month. Hello there. At least the last month. Not this month. This month has been pretty quick. Hello there, Neapolitan. How are you? You know, it was actually, yes, uh, this weekend I was out and about. I was going to a... Um, a movie theater to watch a, a movie with my family and uh, while we were driving there I saw a pizza place that said it was Neapolitan treason, then. no no treason today no that was Friday um I saw a place that had Neapolitan pizza and it threw me for a loop because I'm only used to Neapolitan ice cream right and um, Neapolitan ice cream having the multiple flavors, so my thought was it's pizza with three different flavors on each slice. Like that's that's what a Neapolitan pizza would be, right? No, no. Apparently it's from Napoli or Napoli, Napoli, something like that. It's it's a region specific pizza, not like a type of pizza. It sounds messy. It kind of does, doesn't it? Right? But I mean, imagine if you got like three flavors on the same pizza. Yeah, yeah, my my shirt is. Um, I totally totally planned for this. It wasn't like I accidentally wore a shirt that has a similar color as my background and didn't test it until I'm I'm now live. No, no, that's not at all what happened. <laughs> no, no, that's not at all what happened. Uh, don't mind me. Let me just um uh quickly uh. Just, just change that to a 10. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Ah, so, how are you guys doing today? Italian foods can be confusing at sometimes. I know, right? Oh, man. <clears throat> I, I cook the noodles and it just turns out spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I got some great jokes. Bad streamer counter, yeah. Napoli, Napoli, Napoleon, got it, no, Napoli, I apologize to anybody who's from Napoli, I, you know what, hold on, no, don't, no, not Napoleon, Well, I tried asking Google how to pronounce Napoli, and it's like, did you mean Napoleon? No. No, I did not mean Napoleon, but thank you for trying to tell me. <sighs> Italian food is magic. It is, isn't it? It is. Hey, tube dis. You sure it's letter counts as green screen? So it isn't actually... Okay, all right, okay. Hold on. I gotta, I gotta turn this off now, just to show you. It's not exactly the same. Right? It's, it's like a yellow, right, versus green. However, it counts it as enough. It's like, eh, it's close enough to the color, so we're gonna, we're gonna remove it. But actually, it's, it's yellow. You could definitely see green, yellow, yellow. <laughs> I don't know why I have to do, why I have to do the animation. But, um, but yeah. Oh, don't worry about it, man. No Man's Sky. I have not played that in a while. I gotta say that I really enjoyed No Man's Sky. It did get really repetitive. Once I built my base and I had multiple mining locations from different planets and I had my resources, I kind of lost the feel of like the need to continue to play. I got reinvigorated when I started doing multiplayer, but then when my friends stopped playing, I stopped playing and then it just like got left to the dust. I had like I have like four or five episodes on on my YouTube from it. And yeah, I just Black Magic burn the shirt. No, 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 no. We're never We're never burning the hot cake shirt. I mean, come on. Hot cakes are the best cakes. You can't tell me that there's any cake better than hot cakes. Hmm? Name name one cake better than hot cake. I dare you. I dare you. Why not challenge yourself? I got some good Danish words. You could... Okay, we had um, 
uh, we had a viewer I don't remember who it was they may actually be here right now who used the redemption for me to voice a line and they would give me like German like tongue twisters okay I, I mean even if it wasn't a tongue twister I'd still butcher the heck out of it and then you had to make it a tongue twister which to me as a non-native speaker of German it means nothing cheesecake are we talking about cake you eat as well what cake wouldn't you eat what kind of cake do you not eat ice cream cake oh oh okay all right all right that that is pretty good but that's like cold cake right there's hot cakes and then there's cold cakes ice cream cake is pretty good hey specter the cake is a lie i've heard that yeah we're about to kick out the cake rebellion again no although to be fair none of you have said carrot cake i've heard cheesecake ice cream cake cheesecake cheesecake cookie cake olive cake and a lot of other stuff but i haven't seen anybody say carrot cake so therefore me disliking carrot cake is a reasonable thing i can't yeah for those of you who are confused about the whole carrot cake thing we had so so you know the last three weeks we've been doing um uh, not rim uh banner lord right with twitch integration which has been an absolute blast right did you guys enjoy that I hope you did, because we're gonna be doing another one. So, um, so yeah, so from Bandalord, when we had done a previous session, it was like one or two sessions before, um, we had what was called the Great Carrot Cake Rebellion, because I had, I had told chat, uh, we, uh, we were just playing, and I had one of those Simon Story moments where I will pause what I'm doing, and I will just have a chat with chat for 10 minutes. And I told them the story about a long time ago, I had carrot cake at a wedding and I hated it. It was just terrible. And then from then on, I just never liked carrot cake. And chat was like, this is the reason we will betray the streamer because of carrot cake. We have, we have found a reason to all attack him. Everybody attacked me. I lost my army and that was the end of the campaign. It was just game over. And so since then, I have raised the cost of attacking me. And sometimes it probably wasn't enough. Hey, clone, welcome back, man. <clears throat> All right, hold on. I missed a lot of chat. Give me just one moment. Um, are we really talking about cake? You eat? Damn, we share one brain cell. Cheesecake. <laughs> There's always new stuff. They released an update two weeks ago, complete with Twitch drops and new expedition. Oh, you're talking about No Man's Sky. I see. What is what is an expedition? I don't know what expeditions are. I haven't played it in so long. Sorry, uh, I gotta go before the stream could even get started. I have an important meeting with potential client. Oh, all right, Nitro. If you're still here, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm sorry that you can't stick around, but I really appreciate you being here while you can. German is e easy mode compared to Danish. I believe you. I believe you. Even if you hot brownie, hot brownie is still ice cream on top, makes it better. You know, I had what was called a, um, oh god, what was it, a, a cookie pie or something like that? It's like, um, it's, it's a pie dish that you, you cook like a, a baked cookie, so it's like a, like steaming hot, fresh. And then they put ice cream on the top of that. And they serve it to you. I can't remember what it's called. It's like, called like a cowboy cookie or something. I don't, I don't know. It's some Americanized version of whatever the original thing was. Inform you that the Borg have a birthday, so we will forego the assimilation today. Wait a minute, hold on, Spectre, is it your birthday? I'm glad you enjoyed it. Six point six K channel points saved up. Oh god. Headphones are mirrored too. A little bit. Red velvet cheesecake. Alright, I think I've caught up. Stolaris. What the heck is Stolaris? <gasps> Clone. Do you not know what Stellaris is? Oh, do I have a treat for you? Oh man, this is gonna be great. So, Stellaris is one of, if not my favorite game of all. 
there are a lot of games that I really enjoy, and every game has their own little, like, you know, like, itch that they scratch, right? So, like, RPG game, I'd probably suggest Dragon's Dogma. For, like, a survival top-down game, I'd probably suggest Kenshi. If you want a sci-fi Space 4X game, it would definitely be Stellaris. Now, before Stellaris, it would have been Sins of a Solar Empire, but Stellaris, oh my gosh. Nothing is better than Vandalore except Ark. Maybe. <laughs> Vandalore, Vandalore is pretty good. Vandalore is pretty good. <clears throat> the Borg are old today. I'm sorry to hear that. Expedition is a one month is a month long co op mission that has event has specific rules that require brand new saves to participate. Oh really? Okay, that's cool. Hmm. The collapse of the Great Canadian Republic was caused by carrot cake. Fears are power when united. Oh, I de- Chat is a hive mind of unparalleled power. The, the, the stuff that chat can accomplish when they all work together is astounding. Yes, we will, we will be doing RimWorld. Alright, so. Let's turn off that music. And start getting into this. Yeah. Never give up, never surrender. True. Never give up, never surrender. You know what? I had a VOD. I had a VOD I, was, I had showed in the past, but I, I don't have it prepped anymore of, like, Stellaris. Arm, or Armageddon Day? Yeah, we'll have fun. Old Hegemonia was epic. I don't know. Gotta go silent to farm channel points. All right, fair enough. I can appreciate that. So, uh, today was supposed to be DLC day, where we're like, hey guys, new DLC tomorrow for one of my favorite games, so let's let's showcase it. And Paradox got back to me and like, hey, by the way, you can't do that. You gotta wait. You, you can only stream it on launch. Okay, then what am I gonna do? So, we're having a tutorial day. Let's see here. Current game. Alright! Space! The final frontier. These are the voyages of the USS Cyrus, the ship. I don't know. I don't really have a name. What is my favorite portrait? Oh, in Stellaris? Uh, the starfish. Starfish, best fish. If I, if I create new... Oh, you know what? Hold on. Well, first of all, I will show it off. Uh, that was Molluscoid, right? Yeah, look at him! He's so adorable! Or she! I mean, it says female when I mouse over it. They are so adorable. Expansion requires players to start in a specific system. Build bases, tame creatures. You could tame creatures now? Um, planet, on every planet in the system. Hold on, I gotta turn this down just a little bit. Can only craft and repair items into regions within the base of NPC owned structure. Hmm. Hungry evil. I mean, I, I did once make the pacifist empire where we were just purely no war, no fighting at all. And then another one, which is like the squishy star empire, which was like pretending to be all peace, you know, peaceful and cute and cuddly, but we're just a dangerous. Turn the game music down. The game music is actually not even playing. This is a soundtrack I'm playing. The game music. Oh. Okay, I guess I don't have to mess with any audio. No, I have I have to mess with the slider. It's not a Simon stream without messing with sliders. There we go. All right, so. Hey, Jackson, welcome back. You're gonna play something thematic or broken? I don't know yet. Today, today is supposed to be a tutorial day, so I'm gonna play something that everybody has access to. I'm gonna probably play the United Nations of Earth. Now, I don't like playing as a regular organic. I really enjoy hive minds, 
But again, this is supposed to be a tutorial day for those of you who are joining and not sure what is going on or have wanted to join in on our community games and feel like you are out of your depth. Also, I had no other... Oh, brokenly thematic. I, I had no other idea of what to do. I was thinking about just playing Kenshi today. Because I started playing Kenshi over the weekend because I couldn't wait for an actual Kenshi series on stream because it would have been like a month or two from now. Disable DLC? How do I disable DLC from, from the in-game menu? Can you do that? You know the feeling where these chips are really good, but you want to click stuff? You don't want chip fingers on your mouse and keyboard. What do you do then? Uh, you have specific fingers that you use for chip grabbing and then mouse clicking. Hello there. You just you just learn to use other other fingers. That's what you do. You you have you have the chip fingers and then the mouse fingers. Left click, right click. You just gotta become more ambidextrous. You just gotta be able to use more fingers. You got you got five digits to use. You don't need all of them for chip eating, right? Two for chip eating. Two for mouse clicking, and then you have a third just in case of backup. That's how that works, right? You got the Borg mod, of course. Oh man, Borg Borg mod is great. I mean, it, not Borg mod. It is um. So Stellaris, being a grand strategy game, also has the workshop where you guys can mod the game to your liking. There are so many mods, including. You know, the small little tiny ones where it just, you know, modifies a few values that, you know, the mod maker found annoying or, uh, you know, not to their liking. You know, adds some portraits, adds some technology. Some of them overhaul the entire game to make it completely different. Where it uses the same base but, like, gives out a whole makeover where it's all Star Wars with the Star Wars Fallen Republic, which I think is no longer the, the current version of it. They, they're making a new one. Anyways, and then they also have Star Trek New Horizons, which is a complete overhaul. Absolutely incredible. Again, I have no idea how updated that one is. Hey, Zanny, how are you? I'm sorry I did not say hi before, but I see you in chat. Thank you. How are you? You can tame creatures, make food, grow crops. You can buy an entire freighter and a fleet of frigates to complete idle missions. You can have freighters and frigates? I was always upset. Like, any time I play a space game with ships, I want a big ship. That's just something that I need. I want, I want big ship, big guns, big boy hit hard. I'm the corn style guy. I'm like, I want big units, big weapons. Just everything's got to be big. I don't care how powerful they are. There's just got to be big, and there's got to be a lot of them. You should try getting back into the game. I mean, if you guys will watch it, pretty much my my willingness to play a game on stream is really predicated on your guys' willingness to watch it. If you guys will watch it, I will play it again. Uh, Here Be Dragons. You know what? I actually have not messed with the, the Here Be Dragons stuff. I have... Let's see here. Let me only close that. Actually, I could turn that on and I'll close this. Um, I have 2,100 hours in the game. Actually, hold on, the bad streamer counter is blocking it. I have 2,100 hours in the game, and for some people, they're like, Ah, oh, those are rookie numbers! <laughs> to some, it is. Right, I'd say it's about average. New to the channel, will there be a VOD or YouTube upload for this video? Um, I could upload it. I could upload it to, to YouTube if you'd like. Yes, yeah, so, those of you who are here for the first time, wondering... What is Stellaris? How do you play it? We're going to be going through here, showing, you know, how to create an empire. Um, how it is you play. Most of the basics, right? I might explain a few advanced concepts about what it is I'm doing and why it is I'm doing it. But I'm not going to worry about any meta strategy or any like, oh man, here's a really cool trick that you could do to get, you know, a really good head start. It's more about what the game is. And how the game is played. How you want to play it after I show you is, ent is entirely up to you. What kind of empire, what kind of choices you make, everything is up to you. I'm just going to go through and show you the basics about what the menus do, what the resources are, and how to use them. 
That's the point. You have two times my my playtime? But I've had other people who were like, Oh yeah, streamer? I've got 5,000 hours in that game. I'm like, okay. I wasn't like, I'm like, hey guys, I got 2,000 hours. Isn't that awesome? That's more of a, hey, I have a lot of time. I kind of know what I'm talking about. And I when I say kind of, I mean kind of. <laughs> there is, there. I, I got to say that out of all of the games I've played, I, I have the most time at this game. And this has the most replayability out of any game I've ever played. Any game I've ever played. Especially with more content that keeps coming out. Right? I have replayed this game so many times compared to any other game. If you don't mind using a tiny little exploit, you can have two times 100k fleet, fleet power. Alright, that that is not something we're going to be going over. We're not doing exploits. That's not the point of this. The point of this is to teach people how the game is played so then we can, um, we can you know, play as a community. So I like to do community games on the weekend. Usually they're on Saturdays, maybe Sundays. But uh, the community games that I do, particularly with Stellaris, since that's the most common denominator amongst all of us, uh, is purely PvE. There's no PvP unless sanctioned by both players, where they want to fight over the same AI or a single planet or something like that. Like, hey, I want to fight your ships, you want to fight my ships, and as long as it's friendly. Otherwise, it's just us versus AI. Usually we have some major challenge. Like in the past, we've done all of us versus a 25 times crisis. That's like the hardest crisis you could fight against. But now they've added where you can fight all three crises at the same time. Or in the same save. It's technically not at the same time because that's not how it's programmed. But whatever. 300 hours to overwhelm. I gotta say that it depends. It's got a good skill curve. One hour, 1,000 hours is still learning. It, it does, right? You get certificates? Do you want a certificate? I'm sure... I learned real good. I that's not a D. There you go. Oh wait, wait, wait. And a star. There you go. You know what? I'm actually gonna Here you go. I'm gonna I'm gonna send this in my Discord. There you go. Now you can have your own. You can prove that you learned. Just for you. That's a pen. That's that's not a pentagram. That's a star. That is definitely a star. I did not just make a. Did I just make a pentagram? That's a star. That's I know how to make a star. That is a star. Did I just make a pentagram? Pentagram. Shit. We're, we already got two bad streamer counters today. I can't get any more. Uh, okay, anyways. Yes. Right. So, let's begin. So, first things first. Let's make a new empire. Alright? So, you click create new empire. You select and now you go from top to bottom. Sometimes it will ask you to go back to a different setting because there might be, you know, some, you know, option that you've enabled that denies a previous option. I do want to learn Stellaris. I will do my best to teach you. Did you draw and then ask for a heavenly voice of the child? Yes. That wasn't the heavenly voice that answered. Oh. I'm getting a phone call that I'm not going to answer. Goodbye, phone. So, Hello there. Hello there, General Kenobi. So, first things first, appearance. What would we like to look like? Uh, I, I don't know. Let's go to Mammillions. Let's see what we got here. We got, we got Geico. Let's make Geico. Actually, I probably shouldn't do that because 
copyright issues. Maybe we shouldn't do that. Let's make the Ninja Turtles. There we go. Species name. Turtle. Turtles. Turtlein? I mean, I guess. Sure. Oh! This is new. Toggle for all leaders and pops to have indeterminable genders. Turtish? <laughs> Turtish? Tortian? Tortian? It's like tortilla. Tortian. Tortle. Tortle. Tortles. Tortillin. Tortillin. Got it. All right. Anyways. Tortilicious. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So, let's see here. Let's choose something. Let's, let's do... Uh, mammalian names, sure, why not? You know what, those are actually going to be insanely hard to, you know, I'm not even going to pronounce them. Who cares? <laughs> Alright, so, you can choose a prefix for your ships, you can choose the name type, it just creates name generation. So, for fleets, planets, leaders, and ship names. <laughs> Traits. Alright, now this is where you start getting into more specifics about how you want to customize your empire. From here, you can choose if you want your empire to be more agrarian, where you make more food. Ingenious, where you make more energy credits. Industrious, where you produce more minerals. It depends on what you want. Sure, there are some resources that may be more valuable than others. But it depends on your playstyle, more importantly. For me, particularly, I really enjoy doing science. Having a science build is a good build. Not, you know, I'm... Meta aside, sure, a lot of people really like it in the meta, but it depends on what your goal is. Science allows for a lot of uh, scientific gain for more production, for more resources. It just helps overall in a lot of ways. Tortuga, maybe. Hey, Laura, welcome back. Wasn't ready for the early bird special. Okay, so early bird special, yes and no. Again, we had in the U.S., we've had... Um, uh, Daylight savings, which means that my stream is an hour off from the usual stream for a lot of my European friends. Because a lot of you are from the European area. A lot of you are from the European area. So that means either I was an hour late or an hour early. I don't remember. I don't really mind very much, whichever. <sighs> Your goal is to win? Okay, good. That's a, that's a good. That's a good goal to have. Any other goals? <laughs> like fun? All right, turtle turtle soup? No, no turtle soup. What is with you? All right, so let's just choose something. Uh, turtles, let's do, I mean, if we're role playing it, right? Let's say that turtles, they're long lived, right? So we're gonna make them venerable. They live a really long life, they're turtles. But that cost me four points. Now I have negative two points. So that means I need to choose something that gives me points back. So I need to choose a negative trait. Positives and negatives. So, hmm. Maybe. Maybe our turtles are really smelly. Really smelly turtles. I don't know. Have you ever smelt a turtle? Who here has smelt a turtle before? Also, we're not a turtle. We're a tortoise, aren't we? There's a difference between turtle and tortoise. We're a tortoise, which is why we're tortillan. Turtles are smelly. All right, well then we're repugnant. We're super smelly. Now we balanced it out. We could do another thing. Let's say we are really slow breeders. I'm pretty sure that tor uh, not tortillas. I'm pretty sure that tortoises are very slow breeders. So we'll choose slow breeding. At the same time, maybe we're adaptive, all right? We're gonna choose adaptive. That means we have plus 10% habitability. Welcome back, Cot. What time do you have? It's, it's just past midday. It's like eight minutes past midday. The turtles live in the server. Only the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. 
And maybe we are Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I don't know. Alright, so we click next. Now it asks us to choose a world. Now, the world you choose, from what I know, can actually... Well, your starting world is pretty much average. It's mostly the same as everyone else, unless you have specific origins and other modifiers. However, worlds after that, worlds that, that becomes your preference. That your That's your world preference. That means that if I choose ocean worlds, then my race will prefer ocean worlds out of any other worlds. And will actually get negative modifiers if I try living on a world that's not an ocean world. Depending on how bad it is, the worse it is, right? So, if I had a desert world I was trying to live on, when my normal world is an ocean world, that is really bad. You can live on it, it's just gonna suck. So, let's choose an ocean world, that makes sense to me. Remember, we're choosing roleplay, not meta. Homeworld, um... Sewer. Star. Hot. That's fine. That's probably a really terrible name for a homeworld. What should we name our homeworld, chat? There's not teenage anything about that? Conclusion, ease much people pizza, you live 80 years. I mean, I gotta say that... I mean, the turtle face, not yours? Oh, I didn't think you were talking about my face. But now I am. Turtle Lord? Turtle Lord. What an odd... Wait, I named my son an odd name? What'd you name your son? Optimus Prime? Chewbacca? Turtle Lord. Turtle Lord. The Turtle Lord homeworld. Sure. Call it Shiny Ball. Oh! Oh, wait! I know, big, blue, wet thing. Plus one to anybody who knows what that is, what that's from, the big blue wet thing. All right, next, let's see here. We're gonna choose our city archetype. Let's choose something, I could choose aquatic, but that's not something everyone else will have. Let's choose the mammalian one, that's a basic one. Click next. Now we get to choose our origin. Now this is where you really get into the meat and potatoes of your empire. This adds a lot of flavor and direction to how your empire will play. A lot of it. Some, I mean, it depends. It, it can vary, right? The prosperous unification, you just get extra population. Remnants, you're now on a relic world. Uh, if I scroll down, shattered ring, you're now on a mega structure. In the middle of space, a giant metal ring. Different starting points can give you vastly different playthroughs. Galapagos and Darwin. So for those of you who did not know what the blue, big blue wet thing was, that was from Muppet Treasure Island. Ninja, that is definitely not appropriate. We are a hive mind? We're not a hive mind yet. I mean, we could be a hive mind. Did you just say meat and potatoes of your empire? What, do you think that... That tor tortons can't eat meat and potatoes? I'm pretty sure tortoises will eat anything. Remedate is fun? Well, again, we're, we're going for... Tutorial, not for meta. Yes, remnants is really good. However, we're going to go for Prosperous Unification because that's going to be a default standard for a lot of people. So, Prosperous Unification, we just get extra people and extra districts. Alright, from here, then we get to choose the ethics of our society. Uh, I, we could be pacifist, xenophile, authoritarian, spiritual, militaristic, xenophobe, egalitarian, or materialist. So... Or you could be, like, fanatic in one of these. So, they all give different modifiers. And they also prevent you from doing certain things. So, for example, if you did fanatic xenophile, you cannot enslave or displace other species. That might cause a problem for you if you want to try to genocide another race. Not that I'm promoting it, I'm just saying... 
it will stop you from having that option. That's not a phrase the wifey knows. Oh, meat and po oh, meat and potato. Got it. So the meat and potatoes means like the the primary source of something, like the what makes it what it is. So it's a I, it's a colloquialism from America, I guess. It's it might be a southern thing or a western thing, essentially saying that it it is the primary. Man, how do I define meat and potatoes? It's weird. It's weird to try to define idioms. That's very interesting. I guess. Soulmort, I will not allow that message because that is not appropriate. But hi, hello, I see you. When I was playing last night, you found a Dyson Sphere on the border of a fallen empire. Finding ruined mega structures is just phenomenal, but only if it's within your reach. If it's not within your reach, then it becomes, instead of a gift, a future war goal. It's actually a good joke. Well, jokes aside, you used a you used a naughty word. You used genitalia in your sentence, so the Autobot caught you for that. As a German, I have no right to judge weird phrases. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, uh, let's see here. As a Ninja Turtle, clearly I would think that we are xenophile. We like people. Pacifist? I don't know. The, the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles weren't pacifists. That's for sure. Um, They weren't spiritualists. I mean, well, maybe a little bit. Like, they did the, 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 the whole karate thing. I don't know. Militarist. How about fanatic xenophile? And, uh, I don't know. Materialist. They like collecting stuff. They really like collecting stuff. Did you see their sewer area? Especially in the live action? How much garbage they had down there? My god. Definitely military focused. Xenophile militarist. We could do that. A little bit of everything. Hey, Storm. We meditated a lot. Oh, pizza! Oh man, that would be a, that would be a fanatic materialist, right? Meat and potatoes is a Shakespearean phrase referring referring to the main course. Getting the meat and the potatoes means getting through the fluff and necessary stuff. Oh, they were warriors, I suppose. Mike and Donnie like tech? They did, didn't they? Hey, Sir Ice Mage, welcome back. All right, so now that we've chosen our ethics, we're going to choose an authority. Um, Dick, no, Imperial. One ruler. And that was, wait, hold on. Wait a second. All right, I know that we've gotten really far into this. I want to check something. Is there a rat? Is there a rat? I want to be Skaven suddenly. Skaven, yes, yes. <laughs> no, I don't see a rat here. Hmm. Dang. All right. Fine, whatever. Okay, so now we need to choose our civics. Now, authority does make a difference as to how elections are held, if elections are held, and some other bonus and modifiers. But again, you choose what... I would suggest that when you first play this game, go for roleplay before you go for meta. There is a rat? Is that is that really a rat, though? I mean, I don't really see a rat here. I see a platypus and whatever this thing is. This thing is not a rat. I don't know what this is. This is not a rat. Go back, go back to the Tortolans. Hey, Sir Ice Mage. Think we'll be off today? Well. Oh, wait. You, you know what? I think, I think you're right. I think that the Ninja Turtles would be democratic. Yeah, they would have, they would have a democratic society. Yeah. Ketlungs are rats? Ketlings are rats. There is no real rat. Just find someone who's named a rat. 
Yeah, it looks more like an anteater. All right, so, uh, oops. Let's see here. Anglers. On an ocean world, agricultural districts are uncapped. This is pretty cool. I, I would say that on an ocean world, they would probably be really good at fishing. Uh, what else? We can choose two civics. Hmm. What else would they be? A police state? No. Tech oh, warrior culture. Yes. They'd be a warrior culture. Absolutely. Maybe even a technocracy. I mean, you know, Ninja Turtles. Warrior culture. Is there pizza? <laughs> can we get pizza? Nah, they would, they would definitely get food. All right, uh, now we go for the advisor voice. Oh, wait, hold on, did the traits change? Oh, because it shows aquatic. All right, now I get, need to get rid of something. We're gonna get rid of the adaptive. So this is what I was talking about. If you make a choice somewhere, it will undo a choice elsewhere. Uh, or at least add something that makes you have to change things. So since we chose, actually, maybe we shouldn't because that's DLC. Yeah, we're gonna get rid of that one. We're not gonna choose anglers because that's DLC. Let's do, let's do technocracy. Hey, hamster. That's unfortunate, Sir Ice Mage. I'm sorry to hear that. Is there a civic to be focused on GCs? Consumer goods? I mean, CGs. Uh, yes. That's Master Crafter. And, um... Yeah, I think it's actually just Master Crafter, really. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're not getting into that. All right. This is what we've chosen. This is what we decided for our role play. All right. Uh, the traits need to be fixed again. We're going to get rid of the aquatic because we're not aquatic. All right. So advisor voice. The blind masses must be led down the path of reason. Entropy. Dilapidation. All right, so I do have the advisor voice turned really down. But this just, so then whenever you click on something or get a root. Is this still talking? Well, that was a really long voice line. Uh, as the game goes on and you are playing and you click on things or you get alerts or notifications, the game will have an announcer or a, an advisor voice that will alert you as to certain things. Only in battle can the true metal of any sentient organism be measured. Have a seed. Alright, yeah, I don't think that the, they would be that aggressive. Let's do the technocrat. I really like that voice anyways. Alright, so. I have one empire called Tinned Meat. They think all life is just livestock. Wait, hold on. You have an empire that's called Tinned Meat, but they think everybody else is the food? And yes, the, the advisor voice can be changed later. Technocrat sounds slick. It does, doesn't it? I wish I had my own voice in the game. I actually suggested to, to Paradox, well, to the Stellaris team, I was like, hey, you should get some content creator voices in there. And they're like, hey, good idea, but we're working on a lot of other more important things. People are feed too. Crabs are people. The Tortolan Assembly. No, 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 no. Uh, we're going to be the Tortolan uh, Ninja. Teenage. Wait. Teenage Mutant Ninja Tortolans. Yep, good enough for me. Do I even need it? <laughs> That's what happens if I leave it blank? All right, well, we'll see how that how that turns out. Uh, let's see here. Zoological. Can I get a tortoise-looking thing? Do the, do the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have, like, an actual icon? Stellar's TV is very busy, and they've been doing a lot. I mean, I if you guys want to help me make a mod, 
make call it you know the content creator voice pack and then you know we could just have all the other content creators come in and add their voice lines to it that'd be pretty cool well i i don't want to do that i don't want to use an ai to imitate their voice because then i'm stealing their voice i'm pretty sure that's a pretty sure that's a rights violation <laughs> Hey, Storm, how are you, man? All right. Um, right. Let's do... You know what? This is good enough for me. I'm going to choose green because turtles, right? Let's choose a nice, a nice green. Yeah, actually, that looks like a shell. That looks like a shell. That's actually perfect now that I think about it. That's pretty good. Uh, it should be green on green, though, probably. Ooh, that's an even better green. We'll do that green with this green. Oh, no, no, no. We'll go the other way around. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. I like that. All right, so. Ship appearance. Um, Aquatic would probably be the best, but again, that that's DLC, so we're not going to do that. Let's choose... Reptilian. I like the look of the reptilian ships. Although we're not... Well, hold on. We are reptiles, aren't we? No. Are, torti are tortoises reptiles? No, they're mammals, right? They're not reptiles. I don't know. I'm not very smart. Where are my explosions? Uh, this isn't RimWorld. That's next week. No, not mammals. Tortoises are reptiles. Oh my god. You're right. I'm even under the reptilian section. Okay. I mean, we're mutants. Maybe we are mammals now. I don't know. Either my neighbor is firing off a gun or fireworks, and I can't tell which is which. Right. Uh, what is the leader's name? Well, hold on. What was what was the leader's name of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Was it Leonardo or Donatello? Mikey and Raphael were not the leaders. Leonardo and Donatello. I think it was Donatello. It was Leo? It was Leo. Leo. Leo! All right, color variants. Uh, green. Green, of course. I don't really care about the background. We'll just choose... You know what? That, that one's good enough. Good enough for me. Okay. Now, we have spent this, you know, 30 minutes making our empire. Which, uh, for some of you, is actually a very short period of time right how many of you guys spend an hour or more in like character creation what's worse is if it's like an mmo and they're like all right now that you made your character choose your name and you're like oh my god i'm gonna be stuck with his name for the rest of my gaming career and now you have to choose the perfect name I don't care about the background. What kind of RP is... Oh, yeah. By the way, hey, Morty. How are you, man? Welcome, dude. By the way, anybody else who's also interested in Stellar's content, I would give Old, More man, uh, old man Morty there a follow. He does phenomenal content for Stellar's. <laughs> MMO, the name is much worse since the rest is covered up by armor anyways. You misspelled teenage. Please, it's driving me crazy. Ten edge? What? You don't like ten edge? Ten edge mutant ninja turtles? What's wrong with ten edge? All right. So I have edited the teenage mutant ninja turtles, and now everything's fine again. And now it will actually appear here. Oh, I have two. Well, let's delete this one. There we go. I'm also hyped. I'm so sad we can't play today. I got I got 
So the community manager got back to me and was like, hey, yeah, you know, I can totally get you access, but um, we're not allowing preview content right now. I'm like, well, I don't want to bother them anymore, so I just accepted their answer. But in my mind, I'm like, why? We've always been allowed to do this. All right, so now that I've selected, now comes the game details. This is where you will modify what you want your galaxy to look like. This can have a huge impact on your play style or your play experience. First things first, the galaxy size. If you are running on a medium computer, not, you know, a 3060 Ti or something like, you're welcome, Bear, and thank you very much for the bits. If you're not running on, you know, the top of the line processor or computer, it's not that it needs it, but it may have some issues in the late game. So you could play on a smaller star. Also, that will default to having less AI. My suggestion for a first time player is number one, remove the advanced AI. Don't have them. Remove the Marauder AI. Don't have them. You can have probably around two Fallen Empire. Now, keep in mind, yes, this is not the default experience, but it's better for you to learn with a small handicap than it is to learn with the default game, get crushed, get angry, and then quit and never play again. It's treason. No! No treason! No, that was Friday. No more treason. Which I do need to upload that video, by the way. Teenage Mutant Pentagram Turtles. Well, and my race is called As It's. They're trying to wait what as they once did try to save life, but once the homeworld was invaded and were used for food, they revolted and drove the overlord. So you have chosen, chosen death. No, Jackson, no death. Not yet. Soon though. We are the Borg. Blow your shields and surrender your ships. You want me to play the Borg? I absolutely will. This is a tutorial day. I'm not doing my own meta strategies, otherwise I would totally play the Borg right now. I love, I love Borg-like styles. Never give up. Either, either Never the surrender. genetic Borg or like the techno, the techno Borg. So either like genetically where you take other empires and you modify them to become like you, or you, you're playing a robotic empire and you take other empires and turn them into you, whichever. I, I will play a Borg run, don't you worry. I will, I will do Borg, Borgy boys. Big bad beetle borgs. So, uh, next things. Uh, next, let's do crisis. First of all, uh, types random. We're gonna lower the difficulty to one time strength. Keep in mind that when the crisis spawns, which is an end game event that's supposed to challenge the player and not just the player, but the entire galaxy, most players that play this game cannot defeat the basic, uh, crisis strength. So do not worry if you can't beat it yourself. It's a challenge for a reason. It is a crisis. If you don't want it, you can just turn it off. You don't have to have it running if you don't want to, but I wouldn't suggest toning it down for your first time running through. You can also change the year game. The how like when when the uh, mid game starts, when the end game starts, and when the victory year is. The victory year is when the game says, all right, that's it. Game's over. Calculate the scores. And that's it. You can extend that to ridiculous portions if you wanted to. Um, the mid game and the end game just denotes when certain events will fire. Mid game events, so like moderate, you know, issues and crises and things like that. The end game denotes when the uh, the the end game crisis will likely spawn. So you could change those if you wish to. Ensign, fine. I you know you would probably even turn it down to civilian or cadet for your first time playing. I'm going to put it on Ensign just because I'd like to show a little bit of the difficulty. Abandon the meta. It is meaningless, outdated concept. All play, praise the, the role play. Oh, man. Speaking of role play. Hey, guys. You, me you remember the timelines? Oh, yeah. That was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Oh. Oh, heck. I actually forgot about that. Um, Let me turn on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. I think he knows. He's being watched. Smokey. Smokey. 
Smokey. Hey. What are you doing, buddy? Your cat's not allowed in the office? Ooh. Too bad my office is my bedroom. I wish I had my own special, uh... He's destroyed too many hundred dollars worth of equipment. Oh! Oh! That's horrible! I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, hey, wait. Oh, I still have the desk prop here. I forgot that I had this overlay here. Um, right, so somebody has summoned uh, Mr. Fluffington, but first I need to move this out of the way, and I may as well show it off. Look at this. Look at him. This is Charlie. My, my folks got this for me for my birthday. It is a canvas painting of Charlie in front of the fireplace, one of his favorite spots in the house. I don't know where I'm going to hang it yet, but I got to hang it somewhere. All right. Uh, this is a live, this is a live recording. So I apologize for any interruptions in the tutorial. I swear we will get to gameplay shortly, but I also do have to entertain others as well at the same time. And they have decided to summon Mr. Fluffington. Impressive. Most impressive. Yes. Mr. Fluffington is most impressed by the turnout today. Thank you, everyone, for coming by and saying hi. I appreciate you all, and I love you. Hold on, I got something in my face. Let me just, uh, let me just move that out of my eyes. You have any idea how much that annoys me when I have fur in my eyes? Anybody else has issues with, like, stuff getting in their eyes? Give Chan a hug? Oh, of course! Of course. Ready, chat? Mm. I'm gonna give you a nice big hug. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Hang the, uh, the painting above the higher fireplace? Well, then I won't see it very often. What I was thinking was, um, I have a whole area back here with a chair and a bunch of other stuff that I have stored. Um, I was going to remove all of that move the cat cam to the other side of the room and have our cat like it's like a cat perch cat condo whatever they're called you know where they have like the multi-tiered cat thing where you could, they could jump on they could scratch the posts do all that kind of shenanigans um we're gonna put that in the corner and i'm gonna hang both that and i also have a um uh another well it's like a collage painting of carly my first cat that my folks gave to me like 10 years ago. Long time. Yeah, cat treat. Cat treat. Something like that. Uh, thank you, chat. Thank you, chat, for the love and support today. Especially since today isn't, you know, early access content like it was planned to be. So, all right. Um, back, back to this. I apologize, guys. So, difficulty scaling off. We're not going to do that. We're... AI aggressiveness is fine, just normal, normal. Uh, Empire placement, I usually do random. Um, everything, everything is usually just about normal. Iron Man, we're gonna turn that off in case if I do need to reload to show you something. You can play with Iron Man if you want, although I wouldn't suggest it, especially as a first time play. Mostly because if you want to try something to see how it turns out, if you want to be able to turn back the clock, I would suggest that you disable Iron Man mode, otherwise you won't be able to. So, no achievements. That's fine. I don't really play this game for the achievements. So let's begin. We're an hour and seven minutes in and I just hit the play button. Typical Simon stream. All right, in the eons since the first primitive turtle, communities took shape on the archipelagos and lagoons of the big blue wet thing. Our civilization has spread and prospered. Alas, our ancestors were victims of ignorance and superstition in the early eras. This dark period of our history lasted until science and rationality were firmly established as the guiding principles of our society. A new democratic system of government was introduced where the important decisions were made by consensus. Now, after the discovery of hyperlane networks, the finest minds of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Tortolans 
have finished development of the first hyperdrives. The stars themselves are finally within our grasp. Let's begin. Iron Man mode is garbage. What? It's not. I thought the big blue wet thing was auto-generated at first. No, no, we named it the big blue wet thing. So, this is the first screen you'll see. This is the starting. Most everything you'll need to know is visible right now. The rest of everything you need to know is is now way out here. You really have two map modes, right? You have uh, the system map mode and then the galaxy map mode. Now, the galaxy map mode is important, but right at the start, don't worry about it. Right now, you need to worry about you and your planets, which is just your primary planet, unless you have another start that gives you more than one. So, first things first, we're going to look right up here. This is where your alerts will be. If you have any alerts up here, you need to click on them to view what they are. This is very important because some of them are notifications and other ones are critical that if you ignore them, your empire may fall apart. The ones right now are just letting you know that our research has not been chosen. There is many resources and many menus. However, this game does not tend to do menus within menus like other Paradox games, so it's not terribly difficult. But today what we're going to do is we're going to cover what the resources are, and then we're going to cover the four X's of the Grand Strategy game. Expand, Explore, Exploit, Exterminate. Not necessarily in that order because you kind of need to explore, explore before you can expand, but that's besides the point. So, first things first. Energy. Energy is important. Energy is how you upkeep things. Not just energy, but you can also use those to purchase things. So if you're playing the game and you're realizing that you're running out of materials, you can click on any one of these resources. Let's say food, because that's going to be a problem for a lot of you. I've, I've had many a times where I will play with a new player and they're like, my people are starving. How do I fix this? Click on food. And then you could buy or sell food. And you use energy credits. Energy credit is your market resource. You buy and sell with energy credits for everything on the market. That is what makes energy credits so important. There are other things that require upkeep for it, like buildings and jobs, uh, things like that. However, it is mostly used primarily for buying and selling resources. Forex game where you can customize ships. I often combine scouting and colonization in one ship. It's worth the risk. It depends on the game, right? Uh, in this case, they are two entirely separate ships, and I would not... Well, the game won't even let you do that. So, now that we've covered this, we go to minerals. Minerals is what you use in order to build buildings on your planets. You'll see here that I have an outliner. In fact, actually, can I change this live without it being a problem? Nope. Never mind. We're putting that back. I was just trying to make it larger for you to be able to see. So, under our outliner, we have several current visible things. Very important stuff. This is where you're going to have your quick access menu for your most important stuff. Your planets, shipyards, military fleets, and civilian ships. As you gain more, more will appear. As you gain other items, like mega structures or uh, armies and things like that, those will also appear here. Uh, yes, you know what? You're right. The bat streamer counter is blocking things. I apologize. You know what? I'm going to quickly add this, and then I'm going to remove it. So, anyways, uh, we have minerals. Minerals are used to build on planets. It's not very complicated. All you need to do is you need to click on your planet from the planet list, or you can go to your planet manually. So, I know that in the system HOT, which is how it's been named, I can click on my planet, and now I have two building slots. You can also see that there is a building slot available by this little build icon. It looks like a house. So I could just click here, which is what I usually do. Click here, and now I see that I have buildings available. All I need to do is then build one of these buildings by clicking on a slot, and then I could build a building. Now, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Right now, I have no unemployed workers. So why build more buildings and use up resources and have upkeep 
when nobody's going to work it anyways. So, as of right now, I won't build anything. Just because I could, doesn't mean I should. So, next up we have food. Food is the upkeep for biological population. If you have biological population, which most of you will, you need food in order to keep them alive. If you don't have food, they start getting upset. And you start getting negative modifiers and then rebellions and so on. You want to make sure that you try to keep this in the positives. Next, we have consumer goods. Think of those like the cell phones and toilet paper and things like that that your society feels that they require to function. These are important, but you could buy them if you start making negative, right? If, as long as you have positive energy. Next, we have the alloys. Alloys are used for anything space related. So, ships, star bases, mega structures, and the like. Minerals go into space construction? That is also true. Minerals can be used in order to build on your uh, other planets, your planetoids. And I will get to that in a moment. Next up we have is influence. Influence is one of your most important resources as it is one of the hardest ones to generate. And you'll be using it throughout your entire game. Now, as the game goes on, you will need it less and less. But the things you use it for get more and more expensive. So, at the beginning, try to make sure that you don't run out. And it, it, the ways that you can run out is if you have too many agreements with other empires. Influence is used to make sure that you have agreements. Uh, as, as well as other things. I will show those shortly. I'm trying not to get too in-depth because this is supposed to be more of a brief overview. Unity. You know what? I'm, I'm not even going to cover Unity at the moment. That's not important at the moment. All right? Science. Science is important. Science is how you progress as a society. With science unlocks new technology, and those technologies will make your, your buildings produce more resources, allow you to build bigger ships, allow you to get um, better structures, and produce populations faster, maybe even produce new populations. They are important, but it's not something for you to be worried about. If you want, and you're concerned about picking the right one, you can just enable auto-research, and the game will choose them automatically. Then you won't have to worry about this again. However, I would advise that you take your time and read the research to know what they do. That way you can make a better decision. No decision is really a wrong decision, as just because you choose one doesn't mean the others will be gone forever. They will cycle through a new set of lists, but some of them might be harder to find. So choose what you find that you need in the moment or what you will need in the near future. Something also to denote is time. As I've said, you'll see here that it has a cost. Each of these will take a certain amount of time in order to complete. So for this one, it says it costs 2,000 physics. I'm only producing 28, so that means it's going to take an average of 66 months. The game goes by days, months, and years. The game will play one day every few seconds, depending on what speed you're at, so you can play with maybe one second passing, you know, every few days. Or you could slow the game down if you wanted to. There is a slow key here, a, a slow button. You can slow it down so then the game runs really slow. That way you have more time to make your decisions. You could also just hit the space bar at any time to pause the game. So for those of you who, like, really need to take a moment to make a decision, you can just hit the space bar, make your decision, and then space bar again for the game to continue. The pause button is your friend. Exactly, Reggae. Exactly. You can have this game speed up when there's a slow period and nothing's happening. You can have the game pass really quickly if you wanted to. Not that I would suggest it, because you might miss some things. So, we're going to choose some research. I'm going to choose more research for my research. Because more research is good. More research means that you can get more research. It's just, it's a snowball effect. So, now that we've got research, what's next? Well, these other things here are things that I would actually suggest you don't really con concern yourself with. Although empire size and, and these other rare resources are something that you might want to be worried about, th this is where they are. Your, your rare resources, your empire size, your envoy count, your population count, starbase capacity, and naval capacity. That is where these things are located. 
But for the basics, I would not concern yourself with them for now. All right, let's go back to the four X's. Expand, explore, exploit, exterminate. The first thing you'll need is explore. We have here under our civilian ships a science ship. All right, all you'll need to do is select your science ship, find a system near you, right click and survey. That's it. Anything else will pop up as a notification and give you the option to either research it or leave it alone. Now, depending on how difficult it is and how long it takes, you may not want to research everything you find. At the beginning of the game, it is a bit of a race between you and the other nations. You'll see here that mine is in the right side of the galaxy, right middle-ish area. Now, I have no idea what or who is around me. The other empires that might be near me could be friendly, could be enemies. So really at the beginning of the game, it is all about searching the stars to find valuable resources, choke points, and habitable planets before anyone else does. So it could be a good strategy to build extra science ships, and that's what we'll do. So I'll go to my science ship, my shipyard, which I could then modify for modules. We need a shipyard module, which we have. If you lose it, you'll need to build a new one. You go to shipyard down here at the bottom and construct a ship. We're going to construct a science ship. So it's going to take 60 days. And you'll see here that it also took alloys. Now, that's not the only thing we're going to have to pay. But for now, just for the ship, that's all we have to pay. Now we have to wait. So we're going to wait a bit. However, I did tell our first side ship to go over here and search this system. Now, I chose this system because it has, as you can see here, an ocean world. I'm actually covering that. Actually, you know what? Hold on. Let me move, uh, move myself to the corner and make it a little bit easier. That is true. There is an auto pause that you can set up in the game menus for gameplay. If you want the game to pause... You have event auto pause and event auto unpause. So once an event pops up, you can have it pause. And then you, the moment that the event goes away, it will automatically continue playing. I think that's on by default. Also, I'm noticing that my bit rate is really struggling right now. So now that we've told the science ship to go and research, let's see what it does. Anyways, as, as I had said, this, this is a ocean world. And since our race has an ocean world preference, that's what I want to research first. Now, let's speed the game back up to normal speed. And the ship is away. Hey, Candy, how are you? You're just in time to learn how to play Stellaris. Right? So, the ship is going to go through the space, arrive to the new system, and it's going to research. Since I told it to survey the whole system, it will survey it automatically. It has already chosen a path. Now, you could tell it to do a path manually, but it's just a lot easier if you just tell it to survey system. In fact, you can even tell it to survey multiple systems. So, like most strategy games, you can do a shift command. You can select an item or a ship and then hold down shift to give it additional commands. So, it will do these and then go over here. It looks like our other science ship is now ready. So I built the ship, I went to the shipyard, built a ship, and now the ship is here. Now that I select the ship, I currently don't have a leader on it. It's very easy to assign one. You simply click assign leader, and then you need to recruit someone. So it automatically selects the scientist group, because that's the kind of leader that this ship needs. There are other leaders. There are fleet leaders, admirals, there are generals and governors. Governors are for planets, which we already have one. Admirals are for fleets, which we don't. And we have no military group. We have no troops, so we don't have any generals either. I accidentally minimized that. Oh, you're doing great riffs. I see. Yeah, you and your Diablo. So, let's get a new leader. We'll click recruit, and now we'll choose a leader. Now, keep in mind, I did skip over the unity because it's not something I want you to worry about because although it is very important as a gameplay feature, we're covering the four X's and that's what's most important. Then comes 
the secondary stuff, which is one of those. Oh my goodness, are, are you guys, I'm seeing that my bitrate is going all over the place. Are you guys having any issues with the stream? Hey, Tajal, thank you so much. How you doing, man? So, we're going to hire someone, all right? Now, they do have traits, and as of right now, I would not worry about those. Those are more for min-maxing kind of stuff. Although helpful. Although helpful, it's not going to be the end of the world if you choose somebody of a different type. If you can choose somebody who is specified in survey, that's good. If you can't, don't worry about it. Right now, I'm going to choose this guy because they are cheaper. So I'm going to recruit. I'm going to click on them because they're available. And now they've been applied. So now that you have a leader, you can send this ship out to survey systems. So now I have two science ships. That is double the surveying than when I started, which is very important. I'm glad. Thank you, T'Chal, for the alert. So now we're going to wait a bit. So, so far, we've done explore. Next up will be expand. Now to expand, we have to first wait. This is one of those pop-ups that you'll need to read. Uh, green protocol will be, will open, open arms. So, our science ship has just finished surveying the whole system. And it tells you, saying, hey, we're done. So the system has been surveyed. So, here comes the expansion part. So, we've gotten the explore. Now we do expand. So, we select our construction ship. We right-click on the system. And we tell it to build an outpost. All right, now this is step one of the, the expand portion of the tutorial. Thank you for the alert, guys. I really appreciate that. All right, so again, right click to expand. Now we just need to wait. Structure ship is making his way over to the new system. Start on the construction. 18%. Usually I'm playing on a faster speed, so normally it's done by now. My apologies for the the break in speaking. 90%. Construction and construction completed. So now on the map you'll see that our border now encompasses two systems. So we've explored and now we've expanded. But we haven't really expanded yet. We've expanded our borders, but we still only have one planet. Now that there is another planet here for us to inhabit, another uh, ocean world, we need to colonize it. Now there is a very easy way to do that. If you select the planet, whether that is in the system or from here by clicking on this little green icon, you may have a green icon, you may have an orange icon, a yellow icon, or a red icon. Green is good, yellow is okay, red is bad. The orange just means that it has not been explored yet, and the game doesn't know what to make of it yet. You have to explore and, you know, survey the planets first, because they may have effects on them. It may have special abilities or special events or maybe even an archaeology site. So, once we selected the planet, you can click here to go to colonize. However, at the moment, we don't have enough resources. We're short. We're short on both the consumer goods and the alloys. So, in order to rectify this, I could build more things on my planet to produce more of these resources or... I can simply use my storage of energy credits to buy what I need, which is exactly what I'll do. So, as I had explained before, all you need to do is click on the resource you need, and then we'll automatically select it in the buy market. Now I will buy the resources I require. I need 200 of these consumer goods, so I'll buy a few 50s, and now I'm at 237. I'll do the same thing with the alloys. I need 200, so I'll click alloy from here. I could just click here. Or, I can just click in this menu. I will buy 125, and that gives me 200. So, now I have the resources I require, and now I can click this button. 
Now, when you're colonizing, I would suggest using this method. The reason why is because it will automatically, once you've named your colony, it will automatically queue up a colony ship and the moment it's ready, it will come over there and colonize the planet. Now, let's say I did not use this method, which again was you click, colonize, ship, name. That's it. Fairly easy. Now, when you're in this menu, you will see in, in the future, you'll see a bunch of other species. That means that you could send, let's say we have our Tortolans, which only like ocean worlds, but then there's a desert world. But we happen to have another species in our civilization that really likes desert worlds. You could send that species over there instead from this menu. But right now we only have one species. It's just the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So, we could queue this up, just as I've done, or we could do this manually. Let's say I know I'm going to colonize this stuff over here. So I can go to my shipyard and I could build the colony ship. I could, you know, go to shipyard, go to go to the shipyard down, down here, click on the colony ship and then select the ship I want, the colonist, and it will start producing it. Although doing it with this method means that once it's ready and it appears as a ship, it will not automatically go to the destination. I will have to tell it where to go. But this does mean that you can queue up colony ships and save them for when you know you'll need them in the future. Mass extinction event. I'm probably not going to do that event. Because that is beside the tutorial. Alright, so, as I have shown, we have learned how to explore. And we've learned how to expand. Now we need to start getting into the exploitation. To exploit resources, once you have gone into a new system, you'll see here that on the map, there is an energy icon here. Now the energy icon is with a white number. That means I'm not gaining this resource. You'll see here under our home system that we have energy, minerals, science, and trade value. The energy and minerals have a green number and the white number. The white number is a number that you're not collecting. So we're collecting 10 energy and 10 minerals, but not three. There's three here of each that we're not collecting. So, same thing with the new system. We're going to select our construction ship. We're going to look at our system and find that we're not collecting from the sun. If you use your construction ship, right click on the sun, you could then build a station. Pretty easy. You could do that from the overall menu as well. Once you're in the, the galaxy map, you could just simply select your construction ship, right click on a system, and say build station. Easy. Minsen, thank you so much for the follow. I really appreciate that. I hope that I'm being easy enough to understand for this. As I'm explaining and I'm trying to explain it very simply, I'm realizing that there's still a level of complexity and might be hard for you to remember. I will plan on uploading this to YouTube, that way you guys can refer to it. However, since this is a live recording, it will not be shortened or edited down for simplicity's sake. That means there's gonna be a lot of distractions. Case in point! Lower your shields and surrender your ships. We will add your biological and technological distinctiveness to Thank our you, Rick. Your culture will adapt to service us. Resistance is futile. So, now we have constructed a mining station above the sun, and now we are collecting extra resources. Now, keep in mind, everything you build has upkeep. So, this station, although earning me three extra energy, has an upkeep of one. So, sometimes building stations may not be worth it to you. Also, I did use minerals in order to build that station, and I'll show you again. So, we're going to go back to our home system. I only have 50 hours. Appreciate the tutorial. I'm glad. Did I just call you just No, I didn't call you distractions. I called your messages distractions. I'm kidding. No, I mostly distracted myself. So, I'm going to send my construction ship over here. Enter orbit. Now, you don't have to tell it to enter orbit. You could just tell it build. You'll see here that in order to build the station, it requires 100 minerals. Now, it would make more sense to me that it would cost alloys, but that's a game mechanic argument that's for another time. So, we're building another station. Good. 
I'm going to queue up at the same time I want them to build over here. So I'm going to hold down the shift key, tell them to build this station as well, where I'm going to be ignoring a lot of these pop-ups, and he will automatically have it queued up. So the moment he's done here with this station, he will go over here and build the other one. One of my science ships has been completed. Let's see here. It's you. So this science ship has surveyed the system, found two habitable worlds. However, one of them is already inhabited by primitives. Now, the primitives, the pre-FDL civilizations, is pretty much the focus of the new DLC coming out tomorrow. However, that's not the focus of today. It was supposed to be, but, uh... Big Blue Wet Thing, I see we're naming things just like the Earth... or Earthikians? Name their planet Dirt? No, no, no! So, the Big Blue Wet Thing was named the Big Blue Wet Thing because of Muppet Treasure Island. If you have not seen Muppet Treasure Island... Uh, I would suggest you give it a try. Even though it is a children's movie, it is a phenomenal movie. Also, it has... Oh, God, what is his name? <sighs> what is that actor's name? Now I'm trying to remember. What What was his name? It's so iconic, and now I forgot. Tim Curry. That's who it is. Tim Curry. Candy was so... Jim, yeah, Jim Car- no, Tim Curry. Look at chat. I'm looking at chat! Alright, you said it twice in the span that I said it once. Anyways, so... That's why it's named Big Blue, I think. See, this, these are the distractions I'm talking Never about. give up. Never surrender. Minus 10 points. Should I, should I add another bad streamer counter for that? Hey, Minecraft. How you doing, man? Alright, so... And he's like crippled now? Yeah, he had a yeah, he did have a massive stroke. So, anyways, back to the tutorial. Don't distract me. So, now that we have found a pre-civilization, we could do a couple of things. We'll be benevolent for the moment, and we'll just simply observe them with a station. What you could also do is you could invade them by simply making a military fleet. But we'll get into that in a moment. That's the exterminate portion. So, for four, four X's, right? There's expand, explore, exploit, exterminate. Now, which order those come in, it really depends. For me, it's more of explore, expand, exploit, exterminate. But, <clears throat> that aside, right now we've gone into the exploration, and we're getting into the exploitation. We also still need to build more buildings. Our population on our homeworld is growing very slowly, but we're about to get a new population. We have one available job at the moment, but we're going to need more. So, what should we do? Right now, we'll see that we are making more than enough energy credits, minerals, food, not so many consumer goods, and we could be doing better with alloys. Now, these are your primary resources. There are other resources, but we're not worrying about those right now. So, first things first, I will need more consumer goods. So, I'm going to go to a building slot, Find a, a consumer goods building, which is the civilian industries. I'm going to build this. Now it's going to upkeep 12 minerals. I have more than 12 minerals. So we'll build the civilian industries. And it will take a year in the game to build. So we're going to unpause and let time go by. Now our science ship still needs orders. So I'm going to tell it to survey here. Now what I could do, which is easy, is there is an automated survey button. In fact, I'm going to tell it to automatic survey. I'm going to click this button, and the AI will automatically survey for me, and I don't have to tell it to do its next job. Oh, our colony ship is completed. So, back to the expand portion. Right? So, we've done the explore, and now we're back to expand. Our colony ship has completed, and it is not doing anything. That is because I built it manually rather than using the automated colony system. So, I need to select my colony ship, Go into the system, right click on the planet, and hit colonize. I can name it whatever I'd like. We're going to name it Candy Land. All right, Candy, just for you. And we'll just let the colony ship do its thing. It'll make its way over there. It will begin setting up the preliminary colony, and then it will eventually colonize. Now, it takes time. It's not instant. It can also be stopped, not by you but by enemies. 
An enemy could easily come over there and start, bar start bombarding a planet. So you want to make sure that you keep them protected. You must learn to remove Tyler's... So many don't do that and it saddens me. Oh, you're talking about removing um, the features? Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll cover that. Well, I mean, I think we should. <laughs> don't distract me, but it's so easy to do. That is so true. That is so true. All right, so another science ship. He's now not doing anything. Well, I'm going to put him on automated survey as well. Our construction ship is done. We're going to send him out to expand this way. So I'm going to right click and build the star base. We need one called Uwu. We need one called Rohan. We need one called Darlene. I mean, I suppose if you really wanted to, we could, but we only have two systems right now. Maybe we'll name them in the future. I mean, we could we could rename the system, like the whole system, to Darlene. Dar. Darlene. Now the system is called Darlene. Now what's funny is that everybody who plays in a multiplayer game will see that this system and the planet is named Candyland and Darlene. Hey, Lieutenant Gunny, it has been a while, hasn't it? Anomaly detected. Uh, we're gonna leave that. So, this is what I'm talking about. So, we have our science ship surveying a system. He found an anomaly. However, this anomaly is going to take 1,000 days to complete. That's a long time. It could get a lot of other stuff surveyed in that amount of time. So I'm simply going to say, leave it be for now. And the survey ship will continue going on its way. So they have the hydration. All right. So we've done explore. We've done expand. We've done exploit. For the most part. Exterminate is what's next. So, you start the game with a tiny little fleet. And I mean tiny, you get like, like three, three little shippy boys. I mean, look at these boyos. Look at this, look at this boyo. It may look big, but that's just perspective. That's what he said. So, I mean, that's what she, whatever, that's beside the point. Uh, I, I need to do that. I, I keep wanting to click on it, but I don't want to discuss it yet. Uh, more anomalies. We're going to leave. We're going to leave. We're going to leave those alone. Those are going to take too long to do. Execute order 66. Who forgets to delete? No, it's not that I forget to delete. I just don't care. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me whether if I have the ISS or not. Do it. Do it. Execute Order 66. Commander Cody. So, we have now built another building. And we're now producing more consumer goods. Now, keep in mind that the populations... Now, now this gets into more, like, more in-depth. Like, this is the, the next level of knowledge. So, we're not really going to go too far into that. But I will show you that we did gain more artisans because we built that building. So now we have more jobs available. There is more information to see here. But again, this is, this is stuff that's more advanced that we're not going to cover right now. This is triggering me so hard. What? The ISS? Why does that trigger you? All right. So we have now expanded into the new primitive civil like territory. So now that we've taken a new system and there's more energy credits to be gained, we're going to select the construction ship and tell it to build a mining station. But you'll see there there's also another option, an observation post. We'll do that too. New technology discovered. Oh, new technology. Okay. Well, first, let me go back to sounds. There are other things I wish to modify. All right. So, you'll see that it popped up saying, hey, your science was completed. And I could have clicked on the new the new button, like, you know, all right, take me to the research options. But I closed it. It will still appear here saying, hey, you need to research, you need to choose your research. So, we're going to click engineering research. It will open this up. 
We're gonna select a research. Let's do more armor. Armor seems pretty good. Let's do armor. So, also our society research is about to complete in one month. So we'll let that finish out. One month is about to tick. And there we go. So we're gonna go new research. What do we wish to get? More food. Food is good. Let's get more food. Wouldn't be a Simon's TV without audio sliders. I know, right? Actually, when I loaded up the stream this like today, it didn't actually need audio sliders. So I mod I messed with the audio sliders just because. Because it wouldn't be a stream without it, right? Right. So, uh, let's see here. Next up on the list. Out of all the resources we need, we can probably use more alloys. So, under one of my buildings, I could build it under the district, which builds, which gives me both um, alloys and consumer goods. There's also the generator district, which produces energy. There is the mining district, which produces minerals. And then the agriculture district that produces food. Now, the city district gives you a couple of things which are important. This gives you more housing. You'll need this to a point. Eventually, you won't need it because these other buildings also give housing. But for the, the specialist buildings, you will also need housing. Let's see, what else did I want to mention? Something important other than the, uh, the features, which I will cover. Nitro, that is awesome. I'm so happy for you, man. I'm glad that things are looking good for you. I hope they stay that way. Each district has enough housing for its jobs. Yes. Yeah, that is true. They do. But unless you have... Um, <sighs> what is... Uh, I'm trying to think you'd say um, it's a racial trait, but that aside, on average, 99% of the time, yeah, all you'll need to do is build a district and it will have housing for those jobs. So you won't really need to worry about that. But for the unique buildings, they will. So we currently have seven empty housing and two available jobs. Now, although we don't need to fill them in yet, it will be something we'll need in the future. I'm going to want more alloys. We're going to need those for ship production and starbase production. So, I'm going to queue up that alloy foundry. Now, while this is being built, you'll notice that there are a lot of locked buildings here. Now I can't build anymore. Although that's not entirely true. So, you'll see here that there's these blockers right here. There's little information right here. Alright, let's get rid of that. So... What you can do is open up the features of the planet, and you'll see that these are all the features. Increasing generation for max generators. Well, not generation. Increasing the amount of districts you have for certain resources. Mining districts, uh, food districts, and whatever. There are other districts here that currently are being taken up due to negative effects. Now, almost every planet has a negative effect. Some negative blocker. So that might be a jungle, that might be a mountain, that might be a volcano, it might be um, wildlife, it might be ocean kelp or something, I don't know. Whatever it is, if you have the technology to remove it, you can pay to have it removed. That will give you extra district slots, right? It will. So right now, you'll see that the planet only allows up to 19 slots. In order to gain more districts... You need to build, so, sorry, let me let me re retract. I just realized I missed an important information. I plan on being very strategic and very smart with my choices so that it does stay this way and maybe even bigger. That's awesome, man. So, um, <clears throat> right, as I was saying, I apologize. So in order to gain more resources, you can build more districts, but there is a counterpoint to this. Now, again, I don't want to confuse you. I don't want to give you too much information, especially as a new player. But something that you will want to know is that you have your district slots and you have your building slots. Now, as... The Frick, somebody's throwing a ladder around. As you play, you'll know that through technology, you will get more slots available on your planets. But in order to make more slots, you need to build 
city districts. So you have only so many slots to build on a planet. Right now we have, like I said, 19. Technically less, because certain ones are being filled up. But I'm only allowed to build three more, three more districts. If I build one mining district, then that means I get less generator districts. If I build a generator district, then that means I get less mining districts. You can only build so many to fill them up. Let me actually buy some minerals to show you. So if I buy one here, or if I build one, now I have less uh, city districts, right? Now I can cancel these, and I can always replace them. I could, I could demolish them, I could replace them, um, if, if I really needed to. But the building slots cannot be opened without building city districts. They give you building slots. So if you just need raw resources, I would suggest building districts. If you need unique resources, like alloys, or maybe unity, or other things, or science. Science is a big one. Science is an important building, and I would suggest building it. But we're not covering that because that's more meta than anything else. So, we've done explore, we've done expand, we've done exploit, let's continue on exterminate. So we have these primitives here. Now since it is a primitive civilization, they do not have access to any space technology, they have nothing in that regard. Right now they are actually in the Iron Age. So how do we deal with them? Well. We build troops. We invade their planet. Since they have no space craft at all, we have no space station to worry about, we can invade them purely with infantry. Now, although you can... Soulmore, thank you so much for the follow. Although you can invade them with infantry, it is not advised. Not at the beginning of the game. Unless you are adept at taking care of uh, primitives that you've conquered, you can very easily lose control and actually have your empire crumble due to the negative modifiers that you'll get. So it would be suggested that all you do at the start is build an observation post as we are doing. So the observation post is being built. That's it. That's all we're doing. Now we're going to keep doing the explore, expand, exploit over and over until we find an opponent that we need to exterminate. Normally... I wouldn't really suggest doing that. If you want to conquer the whole galaxy, then sure. Exploit and exterminate everyone. But right now, we're just focused on expanding and exploring and exploiting. Speaking of exploiting, I'm going to get the extra influence instead. So, another thing to talk about while the game is going on, because this is, this is something that you'll want to know. Uh, the unity. So I did skip over the unity because I wanted to address it at a later time. The unity is an important part of the game because that is how you evolve your society over time. How you... Oh, we got the Cybrex? Alright, I'll have to discuss this wholly separately in a moment. Uh, these are how you get traditions. So your unity is generated a number of ways. Usually by jobs. There are other ways for you to get unity, but it's mostly by jobs. So you'll see here on our planet that our planet itself is producing 28 unity right here. And unity is good. Unity is important. Especially because now they've they've changed how unity is used in you know one of the previous updates. And now it's even more important. You're welcome, Gunny. So, what, now that we have a pop-up here, as I've said, anytime there's a pop-up, you need to click it. You need to find out what it does and what it wants because it is important. This is very important. I did put it off because I did want to show it to you right then and there. However, the moment it appears, you definitely want to interact with it. So, we're going to click here, and it's going to open up the Traditions tree. So, the Traditions are means of modifying your empire over time and giving them specialties. So, for example, I have several empty slots here, empty traditions I have not chosen. Once I select one, I could click on a box and it will give me a list of traditions I can choose from. Right? Psionics, genetics, cybernetics, mercantilism, diplomacy, discovery, whichever it is I want. 
Now there have been a couple of these I believe are from DLCs, so some of them you may not see like synthetics. Um, but a lot of them are ones you'll still see like expansion, which is important at the beginning of the game. If you've ever played Civilizations, uh, you'll, you'll recognize this, at least from Civ 5. So you have an adoption effect and a finisher effect. Once you adopt it, you get an initial bonus. So for me, for the expansion, it would give me more colonization speed. As you get more Unity, you unlock more perks that you can choose. Now, you can immediately go into other perks if you just wanted to get the adoption effect. However, that will increase other costs. But for the moment, we're going to focus on expansion. We're going to go through expansion. We're going to start getting these other perks. And over time, they'll just slowly unlock. You can increase the speed at which it unlocks by earning more Unity. Now, you can do this mostly by building buildings. Now, that's the unique buildings. That's these buildings. Not a district, but these buildings. So, I'll need to find a, mo a building or a monument that helps me produce Unity. Now, there are a couple of different ones that you can choose. There's the admin office, there's this monument here. Um, you could also do it from the hollow theaters, uh, but uh, it depends. It depends on what civics you have. You might even have a unique building that I don't even have access to. So, now that you know how to make more unity and how to spend your unity, I already had enough saved up since I waited to show you this that I have two perks to choose. I'm gonna choose this one, the colonization fever. That means whenever I make a new colony, I get an extra population. So these bonuses and these other traditions are entirely up to you. Now, this is something that you may want to take, you know, your time to look at and how you want to play out your game. How I would, like I said, it's more role play than anything else at the moment because we're not worrying about meta. All right. Whatever is most important for you at the moment. Now, once I've chosen... Oh, wow, I actually have enough for even more? Hmm. So, once you've chosen, let's say you finish out one of these expansions. Actually, we'll, we'll, we won't give it to that at the moment. We're going we're gonna to continue focusing on what's happening, which we actually just got a precursor event. Now, I don't remember if precursors are expansion-specific. It's been so long since they've been added. If they are expansion specific, then don't worry about what I'm about to say. But otherwise, those of you who do have access to precursors, any precursor you get will be useful. How useful Hello depends on what your empire is. Some of them are far stronger than others and far more important for you to get. Hey there, Morbids. Precursors are in the base game? Okay, good. So precursors, you'll get a number of them. These are essentially... A, it's like a like a quest line, a storyline where you have access to little bits of information about something of a like a precursor civilization, some ancient race that existed before that rose and fell, and you get to learn how they rose and fell. Different, you know, little snippets of uh, the background story, and then a reward at the end. Some rewards are far stronger than others, but all of them are useful in some manner. I won't go over which ones they are, or, you know, different rewards. But the Cybrex is my favorite, personally, because I find it to be the strongest out of all of them. But we're not going to go into that. Hey, Morbids. I don't know if they've added some with the DLC. With the, I remember, remember them being randomly selected at the start of the game. Yes, yes. So it is random. However, keep in mind... You're not the only one who gets them. If you're playing with another player, they very well may get the same precursor. They will likely get somebody else. But if you play with enough players, there's only like eight precursors, I think. Six, seven, eight precursors. If you play with like 20 players, there's going to be overlap. And whoever gets it first gets the reward. So I would pay attention to that. You'll find that by anomalies. There will be anomalies that are precursor related. But that, that again, that's something different. So, right now we're going to continue going through the first three of the X's, which is expand, explore, and exploit. We'll worry about the exterminate once we find somebody to exterminate. Or something to exterminate. 
But essentially, what you'll need to do in order to do that, let's say it has already happened. We've already found something that's hindered our path, whatever that is. Whether that's another empire, or whether that's just a random AI space whale that's causing us problems, you know, because it's blocking the center of the galactic road. Well, you'll need to select your fleet and tell it to go somewhere. Let's say there is an enemy in the Sarpocus. You know, I should have chosen a different one. The Haldi system. Just send your fleet over there, and they'll go over there and they'll deal with it. Now, the systems can vary in size. You could have an enemy on the border of a system, and just because you told your fleet to go there does not mean that they will immediately engage. If they're not within weapons range, nothing will happen. Nobody will fight each other. So you'll need to be paying attention to that. Otherwise, you may have some enemy fleets slip right past your own. Physics research. Uh, more survey speed, sure. Why not? That is true, and I do want to reiterate, it is, right now we're going about the RP. I can't help which I mean, which precursor I got. I'm just happy I got the Cybrex. However, since this won't be a full playthrough, that we're not going to be going all the way to the end, since we're having DLC launch tomorrow, it's not like I get to use the Cybrex anyways. But you're right. Remember the good old days where we just spawned determines the precursor? I remember that. Was that, a, was that a thing? So, the fleet has arrived. It's now in the system. If there was an enemy here, it's not within line of sight of this guy. I mean, line of sight, sure, is a side, but not within weapons range. So, you would have to tell them to engage that specific enemy. I'm going to tell them to go back at the moment. Back home. I used a hotkey. That's the B key. That's for back, if you want to know. Uh, they'll go back to whatever starbase that they've been told is their home starbase. So right now, I'm just kind of playing the game like I normally would. Until we find an enemy to fight. Right now, we're not in any position to fight because we only have our first three starting ships. And the AI is smarter than that. I don't usually build a fleet because I tend to use my resources elsewhere and build them up. It's not until I find an enemy that I worry about fighting the enemy. Let's see here. Uh, new planet. First building. We have very low minerals. Uh, you know what? Let's do the hollow theater. Hollow theater building. We're going to need more minerals, so I'm going to go to my mineral district, and I'm going to build one. Hey, Delac, how you doing, man? Oh, what? Oh, they changed it. Arrested development now no longer reduces how much experience you can gain, but just reduces your level cap. Well, that's new. Okay. <sighs> oh man. Sorry about the on. I apologize. Uh, I need I need a lot. All right. So for the city district, I want another building slot. So in order to get that building slot, I need to build another city district. However, I currently do not have the resources for it. So what I can do is I could buy the resources so then I can queue it up. However, since I don't need it this second, it doesn't really do me a whole lot of good to queue that up anyways. What I will do is I'm going to reduce the amount of jobs we have for clerks because heck clerks. I know I'm not going to get into that. We're not going to soapbox on that. There are some aspects of the game I detest because it's so inefficient and other things that I've argued. No, yeah, we're not getting into that. Ooh, look at this system. It has 24 minerals. That would be a phenomenal system to get. So we're going to immediately come over here. We're going to take it. We're going to build the star base and then we're going to exploit all those resources. As I was just talking about needing more minerals, this would really help us out. We are the Borg. Lower your shields and surrender your ships. We will add your biological and technological significance to our own. Your culture will adapt to your service us. Resistance is futile. Ha! Ah! An alien! We have gotten first contact! Well, I wouldn't say first contact. We have spotted another alien race. 
you'll see here that their science vessel is actually researching in this system up here. So now that we have seen this, now we need to make some strategic decisions. Since we know that there is an empire somewhere in this territory, we do not know if this ship had arrived from this area, from this, this area, from this area, from here, we're not sure. However, we do know that this is a good choke point. If we can take this system and hold it, then all we have is one way in and one way out in this direction. If we can hold this system, that would be even better. But we're going to hold this system. So we need to make sure we expand to it. So I'm actually going to queue up our ship to build an outpost here. That way it won't get forgotten. Important stuff. Are you interested in a little challenge? Uh, I guess what I'm doing while you're streaming. Um, are you also playing the game? I, d I don't know what that is. Oh, man. All oh, this yawning. I realize now that I forgot to take my caffeine tablet. Not that it would have helped by much, but it does help. <sighs> I don't really do the reanimation for the space fauna. I just find it not so useful. I do, I do do hive minds a lot. Either I do just on consciousness for robotics, or I do just, um, like, organic hive minds. However, I have grown accustomed or familiar with the, um, the robotic ascension for humanoids. But it's not, it's not the best. Th what's nice about the robotic humanoid one is that you can accumulate other races in your empire before ascending. And you can't do that as a uh, a regular hive mind. As a hive, as a regular hive mind, in order to have people join you, you need to get the ascension perk in order to have them actually be converted, which is a whole different conversation. That's more upstart. Oh, you're preparing math lessons. Okay. Are you gonna give me math questions to figure out on stream? I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that. All right. We are now earning more minerals. We should be having enough soon for me to build a new city district so I can get another building. Oh man, okay, I wish I was playing as space rats. Oh, space skaven. More Warhammer. You know, I do need to come back to Warhammer soon. They've come out with several updates to the Total War, including, I think, a new DLC or something like that. Some new hero thing. All right. So once we come over here, you know, I will queue this up, but I'm also going to tell him to come back and build all of this as soon as he's done. That way, this will already be done and we'll be good. Also, something else we're going to be doing. So as I've explained before, in order for you to colonize, you can click on a planet and click the colonize button. This one really sucks, so we're not going to do that. It's, you know, 30% habitability, and you get all of these penalties. So your upkeep is increased, your amenities usage is increased, your resource production is reduced, and your growth speed is reduced. Living on a planet that is not normally habitable to your people is really bad. Sometimes you may not have a choice, and you can change this later. There is technology to let you terraform planets. But right now, that's not important. What is important is this planet. This is an ocean world, and it is a good ocean world. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go back to my, uh, my shipyard. Although we can't inhabit it yet, I'm going to build a colony ship now so that it's ready. Although Driven Assimilator or do, doing a Total War build in this game, and by Total War I mean where your empire is at war with everyone, or cannot do diplomacy other than war, um, is not advised. Although it will make your empire strong, it also makes you a target. And since at the beginning when you're learning how to play the game and you won't know how to utilize it correctly, 
you will likely get crushed by a group of other AI that feel that you are a threat. Because you are a threat. As a total war-based empire, you can't be diplomatic with them. You can't be in an alliance. You can't have any sort of non-negotiation pact. Or, like, not a negotiation. A um, non-aggression pact. It's just... It's just not a good idea. A continental world is over here. I don't know. Maybe we could take this system before they do. You're not, you're not building anything. Sparky! Sparky with a raid. How you doing, man? Welcome. We are the Borg, aren't we? Not yet. The Borg didn't start as the Borg. The Borg was something else and then turned into the Borg, right? All right. So, we're going to build another city district because I need more spots. I need a slot so I can build a hollow theater because I need more amenities on my planet. And that makes amenities. It also gives me other things, but that aside. So, another tradition can be chosen. We've accrued enough unity. Go to traditions, choose the next one under the perks, and there we go. Once you have finished, you know what? No, I'll, I'll cover that part when the time comes. When, when this stuff gets chosen, when it's fully five out of five. New technology discovered. More technology. We'll choose. Let's do farming subsidies. Might be worth adding this to your VOD list. Adding what? Raspberry flavored milk with your cornflakes? Are oh, you mean adding it to YouTube? I might. I, I, I probably should. I just, I'm, every time I look at, like, a recording, when I'm doing stuff live, I'm like, all right, this may be acceptable, but then when I watch a recording, and I'm going to upload it, I just cringe at my own stuff, and I'm like, you know what, this isn't worth releasing to the masses, they shouldn't be subjected to this. All right, so, now that our construction, I mean, our colony ship has been made, I selected the planet, and I told him to colonize, so now they'll go over there and colonize. Uh, uh-oh. Oh, also, whenever you get a pop-up, there's a nice little camera button here. You click this, and it will bring you to the system. We found the automated dreadnought. That's a... That's a big boy! Okay, well... Look at the size of that thing! Yeah, you might want to run, dude. This poor scientist better get out of there before it blows him up. Uh... That was one of those, like, hey, here's option A and here's option B, but both of them have the same result. All right, this planet. Now, here comes the decision on when you're when you're trying to go from beginner mode to advanced mode um, for a player. For me, personally, something, I almost feel like I need to say this versus something I wouldn't. You know what? Well, now that I've now that I've said, oh man, here's something that I that you might want to know, then I say, oh, never mind, I won't tell you. You'll be like, but what is it? Um, designated worlds. So this world has really bad generator districts, mining districts, and agricultural districts, but it has really good industry districts. You see that it has a lot of them. As a planet itself, it's only 16 in size, which is not ideal, but it's okay. So, I would want to use this planet as an industry planet. So, I could designate it as such. Right here under auto designation, it automatically designates it as a colony because it's just starting out. But you can manually designate it as a particular type of world. Urban world, mining world, agricultural world, generator world, and the like. They do give bonuses. They give build speed and, uh, well, they give a number of things. Some of them are build speed. Some of them are output uh, increase. Some of them are cost reductions. It depends. As a forge world, I will want this as a forge world. But as of right now, I don't really have the means of supporting that. I can't really specialize it because I just don't have the room. So I'm going to keep it as it is for the moment. But I will turn it into a... Um, an industry world. Like a factory world. Yeah, a factory world, sure. 
Yeah, this would make a good factory world. Candyland will be a good factory world. I just realized it was still called Candyland. Ah, uh, it's because it makes the milk red. Got it. Okay, I guess that makes sense. So, now that we have this system, we are guarded from... Wait, what? Oh. So, my ship here canceled it, or just warned me saying, hey, our orders have been canceled because it had no resources. It requires 100 minerals in order to build this, uh, a, a station, and I accidentally used all of it. So, I'm going to buy some more. I'm going to queue that back up. Now, again, I could do it manually, holding on the shift key to queue all of this up. Or, where's the H, right? H for stop. Or I could just say, build all. And now we'll do it for me. I'm playing myself, just kind of stopping by. That's fine. I appreciate you stopping by. All right. So now that we know that there's an alien civilization up here, we're going to start building our fleet. This is where the extermination part comes in for the 4X. So we're going to select our fleet. Now we can do this a couple of ways. I would suggest using the fleet manager because it will make the fleets dealing with them in the long run much easier. You could just go straight to your shipyard. Go to the shipyard portion, because again, there is three tabs down here. Here's your your starbase modules and buildings, your defense platforms, and then your shipyard portion. You could just queue up a whole fat load of Corvettes, but I wouldn't suggest that. What I would suggest is the fleet manager menu. Now you could do it one of two ways. You could either select the fleet and then click on the fleet manager icon right here, or just go to the side menu, fleet manager. There are a lot of menus here that we haven't covered yet, but that's because, again, we're covering the basics, the four X's of the strategy game. So, Fleet Manager. We selected our fleet. That's this one, Kanalif Starfleet. I want more Corvettes. I'm gonna queue up a whole load of them. And then I'm gonna reinforce the fleet. Now, we can only afford 900 out of the 1700 we'll need but we'll gain more alloys as the game goes on. So, requisition. There we go. Are you hyped for the new DLC update? I am. I am hyped for it. However, I will say that I have been distracted with other things. I haven't really had an opportunity to keep up with it. I I watched some of the dev diary and the the video logs, but Again, I'm I'm not I'm not super knowledgeable about what's coming out because I've been doing a lot of other things on stream. And my off time has been sleeping. Alright. So I built another city district on our home world, the big blue wet thing, and now I have another building slot. I'm gonna to go to that building slot. I'm going to build a hollow theater, which is the building I wanted to build originally. That will give us more amenities, which will help out with happiness, which helps out with stability. And that helps out with everything. Hey, Cactus, welcome back, man. You just want the primitive update? You want to just play as a primitive? Is that it? You just want to be a primitive? I could go outside and bang sticks on rocks all day. I don't need no DLC for that. Unga bunga, grug, grug happy. Grug like stick, grug like big stick. Just wait till grug play arc again. Grug like arc, arc very fun. Until chat kill grug with dinosaurs. Then grug be sad. <laughs> All right, more technology. Let's do planetary build speed. That's a pretty good one. Grug play Conan? Grug Grug has played Conan. Not many ple people play Conan anymore, so Grug have no one to play with. Grug wouldn't mind playing community game with people on Conan. I like I like my Grug roleplay. It's very easy. Grug is very dumb. 
therefore I don't have to think. I'm so glad you're doing this. I've never understood Solaris. Well, we're covering the four X's, which is the basics of any strategy game. The explore, the expand, the exploit, and the exterminate. And we're categorizing them. That way it's easier for viewers to remember. And I'm trying to do my best. However, with games of this size, it's a little hard because there's... Since this is this is live, this is not pre-planned, and this... I wasn't even planning on doing this this morning. And I have no script, I have no way of... I, I'm, I'm trying to regurgitate information. It's hard, but... So, we've done ex explore, expand, exploit, and now we're working towards exterminate. But to reiterate, for those of you who are joining us that weren't here at the beginning, Although you could watch the VOD, and I will be uploading it to YouTube if I remember to upload it. Uh, so you'll be able to reference it in the future. To explore, you use your science ship. You select the science ship and you tell it to survey system or to use automated exploration. To exploit, once those, sur those systems have been surveyed, you select your construction ship to right click on them and make a star base or right click on a uh, system that you already own and build mining stations, or science stations, or whatever the station is. To expand, you simply click on a planet that you don't own, and click colonize. It will then list you through a menu of how to colonize it, but you could either do that or do it manually, which I we're actually doing with this planet here, the Kavzek. I'll need to rename this. What should I rename this planet? We got Candyland. <gasps> Let's name it Shoots and Ladders. Construction online. There we go. Now it's named this now. Now it is known as Shoots and Ladders. It is our industry complex. So that actually kind of makes sense now that it's called Shoots and Ladders. That actually kind of works. Are we going crisis? We're not even going to get that far. We're not going to get that far. That is not the plan. Now when I play tomorrow, I might. I don't know. I've I've been wanting to do a series on stream where I fight against all three crises on 25 times strength. Uh, because I've done it in the past, but then they had the Unity update and that borked all of my strategies. And then since the Unity update, I did do it um, off stream like a month and a half ago. I did a all three crises at the same time. Um, and I did manage to beat it, but again, that was off stream, not on stream. And now they're having this new update, so I'm gonna have to either test it again or do it live. Can the next planet be named No Pants Party? There is no party like a No Pants Party. Borg, Borg, play Conan. Yeah, sure. I say do it live. Heck it, we'll do it live! Why not? Sure. We'll do some of my more familiar builds. They may not be the most overpowered build, but they are the builds I'm most familiar with, which in some cases is more important. <laughs> Baptize them by fire with a live studio audience. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll have so many people in chat are like, oh my god, why, why did you do this instead of this? This is 10% more effective. Although 10% is a big number. But uh, yeah, sure. So, now that I have uh, built a new city district here, we now have more housing on our secondary world. Green numbers is good. Red numbers is bad. Make sure you stay in the green. If you have any red numbers, mouse over it. See what it says, read it, find out what you need to do, and then resolve it. Uh, I would say actually that Stellaris is less complicated than EU4. Especially when it comes to UI layout. EU4 has menus within menus. This game does not. It may have sub-menus, like if you go to... Um, oh my goodness. The traditions, it may have like a tab down here for relics or whatever. But I have to say that EU4 has r menus within menus and so does Victoria 2. Victoria 2 was just so many menus within menus, I just 
tore out my hair and quit. Uh, let's see here. Empire Size from Systems. Sure, we'll get that one. Yeah, nested menus is disturbing. <gasps> oh! Oh no! The AI! So although we don't have enough information on them, which we should actually be probably doing our first contact, I'm going to click here on the first contact icon, and we're going to send an envoy to discover who they are. I'm going to take this system, actually. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expand up here. We're going to expand to this system before they do, because this system is a very good system to have. Actually, that is really good. Systems if we could take this system before they do, that would be really useful. New technology discovered. Crusader Kings 3 has true nested. That is true. That is true. It's a B thing then? No, no. It's it's hard. It's hard to teach somebody something from scratch, especially when they have preconceived notions about it. Also, to be fair, I got in on the ground floor of Stellaris. I played when it was like before 1.0. So, I've, I've been able to grow and expand with the game. It was much simpler back then. Pretty much as, I've, as I was saying, like, the expand, explore, exploit, exterminate stuff, the tutorial would have been over. I would have explained everything there would have been to explain already. But since then, they have added so much extra flavor to the game. Although not critical, it's still important. Welcome back, Cologne. Have I blown up any planets yet? No. No, not yet. We're working towards it. I swear. Man, it's gonna feel weird. I haven't actually like played played Stellaris like hard. Like I mean like like seriously played Stellaris in a while. The last time I seriously played Stellaris was probably in January when I was doing the um the all three crises offline. Um, during the Montu event, it was so nice because I was the role player. All I had to do was watch and tell people what to do. I didn't have to click on anything. A terraforming candidate has been discovered. Interesting. Fascinating. We're probably not going to get to that. Construction online. Just listen to that music. Yeah, we're not dealing with the factions. We're going to minimize that. I, You know what? I wouldn't even bother with your factions. I know people who have played the game for thousands of hours. And I'm like, so what do you do with your factions? And they're like, I just ignore them. You can. Oh, we found them. The corn. Wait, what is this? Cornistian Star Directorate. The snail people. The hegemonic imperialists. We wish nothing but to be friends. Yes, that's us friends. Anomaly detected. Right? How many plans do you have? Unknown. Let's start spying on them. Oh, right, right. Sorry, sorry. Suddenly I went into, like, non-story, uh, I mean, uh, non-tutorial mode. So, now that we have found, through first contact, this other race, uh... Now we have a possible enemy, a threat on our borders. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start building up defenses and ships. I'm going to go to our frontier outpost here, our, our bordered system. I'm going to go into the system and select our starbase here. Now this starbase, this station, isn't really a starbase yet. It is just an outpost. So we're going to upgrade it. Now it's going to take a while. But once it's upgraded, we will be able to build defensive weapons on it to help defend us. There ain't no party like a crisis party because the crisis party stops when everyone dies. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, Gaming Brain, how are you, man? I'm trying to be fairly vanilla right now. I mean, don't I just look vanilla? No, I'm sorry. Um, we're, we're, we're not doing any DLC stuff because I'm just trying to do a basic tutorial because the DLC is coming out tomorrow. And I want people to have an opportunity to maybe get the game and try it out for themselves beforehand. I wish I I wish I could give out like demo keys. Is there is there a demo available for Stellaris? 
Store page. Stellaris. There is no demo. Hmm. I think I feel like there should be a demo. Pretty good work was boring. Canteen work. Oof. Anyways. So we could expand. Expand where though? I don't know. There are a couple of directions we can expand, but since we don't know which way we want to expand, I'm currently holding back. Now, some people would say, just expand. Keep expanding. Don't ever stop expanding. And I could see that being a reasonable thing. However, as a beginning player, the more that you have, the more you need to manage. And I would start small. Start on easy mode and start small. That's my suggestion. Not a cantina. Canteen, as in staff canteen. Hey Google, what is a canteen? A restaurant provided by an organization as such for a military camp, college, factory, or company. For its soldiers, students, or staff. Oh! Oh, you were making food for staff! Okay. So let's go do a time demo. Of maybe a hundred years? Maybe. Maybe. That'd be cool. Not even just putting out the food and keeping the place clean. So little to do, so much time. Oh, so it was a long, boring day. I'm sorry to hear that, man. All right, so explore. Expand, exploit, exterminate, exterminate. So we are currently going to do some espionage activities uh, just because I'd like some more information. Now, will you be able to espionage? I'm not sure. I don't know if this is DLC specific. I, since I have all the DLC and I've been given all the DLC since its conception, I'm not really certain what is and is not in the base game. Still is tacos. Do you think snails eat tacos? Well, they certainly can't be salted. <laughs> so. Spy network established. Good. I have no idea how strong they are. But they could be stronger. So let's build more fleets. Let's keep reinforcing our fleet. So, as we had before, under our fleet manager, we have increased the amount of ships that we're able to have in this fleet. We have maxed out our corvettes. And so we need to just keep reinforcing the fleet until it's maxed out with our Corvette count. What else are we doing here? Sure, we'll do that one. You're on holiday from Wednesday. Okay. Wait, what? Oh, is Canteen like a... Like a punishment? That sounds terrible. Construction online. Construction online. All right, so our border station has been constructed. It is now a rank two station. So let's go in. Actually, we can just see it from this menu. You see here that we have a star base. We have a shipyard and then a star base. It will differentiate because that there are the shipyards that you could build ships from and then the star bases that you can't. If I click on this star base and I go to the star base section, I could make modules where I could build shipyards. That way I could build more ships at once. As of right now, since we only have one shipyard on a station, we can only build one ship at a time. One ship, one science ship, one uh, colony ship, one construction ship, all one at a time. So having more is good. But for right now, we're going to build defenses. So we're going to build gun batteries on this. As well as when we have the alloys, we're probably gonna build the communications jammer or the disruption field, probably the disruption field. Yeah, the disruption field would probably be good. Actually, no, no, if we do the communications jammer, then that's even more sub-light speed reduction. 
Now I'd like 70% sublight speed reduction. That's pretty funny. So, now we'll have a good defensive point, so if we have to fall back, then we can. Have I done any edicts yet? We have not done the edicts yet. I'm just going over the basic four. Basic four X. Yes, so for the for the espionage, I did not explain it because I do not know if that's in the base game anymore. I don't know if that's a part of the Overlord uh, DLC. So I simply selected the Empire in question under the commun under the diplomacy menu here. I went down to espionage. I clicked on espionage, and then I selected one of my envoys to work there. Now they are slowly gathering over time. There are other modifiers you can get to make this better, but right now we're just simply gathering information. Alright, Spectre, have a good time. I mean, have a good night. I was reading your message and speaking at the same time. Have a good night. Hopefully, I will see you tomorrow. In tomorrow's Stellaris Adventures. You can turn DLC off in the launcher. I've never done that before. Hmm. Uh, this is a pulsar, I believe. Oh no, it's a neutron star. So it reduces sunlight speed by 50%. So if I have this communications jammer, then that's an additional 20%. Yes, but it is it is in the choke point, which is fantastic. What about this one? Tau Seti. No. I need more I should probably get a couple more science ships. Now that I think about it. Ah yes, the tradition! So we are about to reach a pivotal point in our civilization's history. Yeah, that is a great choke point, right? So, I will now select Galactic Ambition, which will finish off the expansion tree. So once I've done so, now I get the all expansion option, which is more max districts, and now I get what is called an Ascension perk. These Ascension perks are the great pivotal points in your, your Empire's history that could vastly improve certain aspects of your game. So we're gonna select the empty ascension point par, uh, perk slot, and now we have a number of available per perks. Now a lot of them are locked because of certain things need to be met before. It could be that your ethics simply won't allow it. There are other ones that say, "Hey, you're missing a technology first." Other ones may be, "You know what? Hey, you need to choose other perk points first because you can't have this that early." Either it doesn't make sense to have it that early, or it's too strong to have it too early. So, we'll go back up to these. There's some pretty good choices here. Uh, I'm going to go for the Technological Ascendancy. That's what I usually choose. Although, to be fair, I haven't really gone very hard into, into technology in this playthrough. Mostly because I haven't been worrying about it because it's not... Again, I'm not doing this for a meta. I'm not playing the long game right now. I'm just showing how the game is played. So I'm going to choose Technological Ascendancy. I like tech. We'll get tech. So I choose this, and now it is my bonus. It cannot be reversed. Once I have chosen, it is there. You cannot undo it. So whatever it is you decide, make sure it is something that you know you'll want, because once it's been chosen, it is too late to undo. There are eight perk slots that you can have. So you can still choose other things. Even if you're like, well, I'll use it for now. Maybe I won't use it later or it might not make you know, much sense. It's whatever. But keep that in mind. You cannot change it. I've kind of argued for uh, the ability to change it, or at least some of them, but whatever. I think the espionage was added alongside, but it was one of the free features. Okay, so I know it was added alongside I just wasn't sure if it was part of the free features or not. Alright, station is building its defenses. We need to know all that we can about these guys. Gather information on them! I need to know how strong they are. Let's get another scientist. So our science ship has been built. We're going to select it. 
go to assign leader, recruit a scientist, and this guy's pretty good. We'll get this guy. He's got archaeology excavation speed. However, we don't have enough unity. Heck. Alright, looks like we need to wait just a couple months. So we'll just wait a little bit. System scan complete. You're one of those weird players that don't read the story. Uh, I mean, I've a lot, of, I would say probably about half. A lot of these I've already seen and read. Granted, do I remember what they say? Probably not. All right, now that we have the other science ship and scientist ready, we're gonna have that one do automatic survey. So now this side should start being surveyed. I have one unemployed worker here. Let's get them on alloy production. We need more alloys. More alloys, more ships, more fighting. Uh, you know what? Although this isn't the best agricultural world, we'll probably turn this into an agricultural world. Because it has, ah, what is that, seven? Seven agricultural districts? We will need more food. There we go. All right, and now we wait a little while. We need additional pylons, kinda, kinda. I mean, we will need additional pylons. So our naval capacity is limiting us slightly. Oh wait, hold on, we just got more from jobs. That must be these jobs. Okay. That norm that's normally not what happens. These are this is a unique job that is unique to the starting that I chose. So you cannot rely on that. Normally, in order to increase your naval capacity, so this is a part of the you know I'm gonna ignore that one too. Uh this is a part of the extermination portion of the tutorial, right? So in order to increase your extermination capabilities, you need a bigger fleet. Now, you can just build as many ships as you want, however, you have a naval capacity. This fleet itself has a fleet capacity, so this fleet can only have up to 20 ships in it. Now, I could make... I could make a whole other fleet of 20, of 20 Corvettes, so I could have 40 in total. But as of right now, my naval capacity is 30. You can go over your naval capacity... But it starts costing you more, percentage-wise. So if I went, you know, if I had 20 maximum and I went to 30 out of 20, that's 50% more that I'd have to pay. That means everything would cost more for those ships. And if you could afford it, then you can afford it. If you can't, then I would suggest trying to stay within your means. But for the moment, we probably have the funds in order to go above. So that's what we'll do. That way we can win. Win against these guys. We'll also need to start building um, troops in a moment. And I'll show how that's done as well. Skip me hydroponics. Again, we're not we're not going into the, you know, to the meta strategy. There's no there's no point in in teaching that because that's just more information that people feel that they have to know versus what they need to know. Oh, oh, there was a oh, I'm so sorry, traveler. And my nice stormtrooper cup. Oh, right. So that is another thing. There is there is another part of the 4X for diplomacy, I suppose. There really is no category for that. Ooga booga. Hey, Simon, so I just started playing. How can I expand my borders without exceeding my starbase limit? I can't figure that out. So, expanding your borders does not mean that you have to worry about expanding over your starbase limit. Your starbase limit does not count for outposts. So when you select your construction ship and tell it to build an outpost, it does say starbase, but it preferences, it says outpost, because those do not count towards your starbase capacity. You'll see here that I have two out of three, but I have way more than three. I have way more than two. 
Now, how that counts is upgraded stations. So you'll see here that in my hot system, my home world, I have a star base. I have a shipyard. That's the one that you start with. Outside of that, I have this station on a border, and that is a bastion. That is a defensive station. That counts as the two out of three. I've not had the protein bar, but I do have it prepared. Can you name something? Sure. What do you want to name? So, Uga, does that help you? I hope it does. If you have more questions, feel free to ask. Yeah, so so for for the star bases, if you want to increase your star base capacity, there are other ways to do that. The larger your empire is, the more star base capacity you will have. Now that now the size of your empire, I don't know if the number of star bases is taken directly from empire size, or is it taken from your naval capacity and your population. I'm not exactly certain, but the larger your empire is, the more star bases you're allowed. But again, outposts, outposts do not count as star bases. They can be turned into star bases. You can upgrade them. This outpost here, I could upgrade into a star base, but it does not count as one towards your total. Uga, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate that. It's one plus, it's three plus one per 10 systems. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Interesting. It's increased by owned systems. Now, there is other way to increase them. Now, you can increase it through technology. There is other society technology that you'll get later on in the game that will give you more slots for star bases. And there's even a tradition. Not a tradition. No. I think that is a tradition and or an ascension perk. Yeah, the, um, the defense one. Where is it? It looks like a shield. This one. Eternal Vigilance. No. No, not that one. I thought there was another one. Wasn't there? Or am I... Am I... Silly. Hmm. I think it's a... A tradition. Ascension? Really? I thought so... Oh, here we go. Grasp of the Void. That's the other one. <clears throat> Anyways, there are other ways to increase your... Your total. Also, if you are... You know... If your income is high enough, you can go over... It will hurt you a little bit, but if you can afford it, it might be worth your while. Oh, the only gets two times two. Grasping in the board gives five. Hmm. Okay. Ah, right. This is also something I have complained about to, to Paradox, and they still haven't changed. I would really like you to be able to view the traditions even though you can't select them. You used to be able to do that when they had enough that would fill up every tree. But then when they started adding more that you couldn't fill up every slot, their idea was, oh, we'll just hide them in another menu that you can't see. Well, then how, how am I supposed to look at them ahead of time and decide and read what I want versus right then and there? Disgusting. Anyways, if you have any other questions, either I or chat will be able to answer. All right, how's your... Oh, I can't tell. I will close borders. Heck you, snaily boys! Anomaly detected. Can I propose your subjugation? Probably not anymore. Relations minus 50. Yeah, well, that's not gonna happen. I can force subjugate them, maybe, if I have the, the fleet power. Right, so we're actually gonna get a leader now. So, just a bite. Gaming Brain, get the uh, tier one sub. Thank you so much for getting the uh, sub. That is a thousand and nine you've given out so far. Don't forget to insult. Damn plebles. I know, right? I know, right? 
I have a huge amount of income, but I'm over my limit by triple for the start bases. Oh, that's a huge amount. All right, if you're over your limit by triple, my suggestion, it's likely because you've taken land from other empires, right? You've taken over them completely and taken their space. There might be star bases in your territory that is superfluous, something that's not useful anymore. They could probably downgrade, which you can do by selecting the star base and clicking downgrade. You will need to, I think you need to downgrade it all the way. No, 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 it just says into an outpost, yeah. It will downgrade it all the way. You can if you want. You don't have to. If you can support it monetarily, then that's fine. Delete also works. However, I would not suggest pressing that button because sometimes, or at least it's happened to me, where if you hit the delete key in order to downgrade, the game will think you've pressed it twice and it will delete the whole sector. Well, not the whole sector, but the star base and the outpost entirely. Then you'll have to go back over there and pick it back up. My growth stopped early on in the early game. Should I restart the game if I get shorted so soon on growth? Rookie numbers. Samus, I will move you to my TV and I can f What? I'm gonna tell my mom, Mom, I was on TV! I mean, normally it's supposed to do that, but it's it's happened in the past. Especially whenever I do like major 25 times strat, like, you know, 25 times strength games. And I'm going through my, um, my pivot moment where I'm like downgrading things or whatnot. Or I take over another empire. If I absorb another empire and I need to restructure their entire civilization to fit my own, it happens. Your star base limit is 17 out of 7. Or 20 out of 7. Huh. That's weird. We need more alloys. More alloys. Good. Now we mostly just need time to pass. We could probably use more energy too. Let's build an energy district. More influence. All right. We know nothing about these darn plebles. We don't even know what kind of civics they have. We're slowly gaining more knowledge, though. It's taking some time. Let's launch a mission against them to gain more information. Yes, yes, yes. Discover the anomalies. Sure. Yeah, so if you have an outpost like I have here, it does not need to be upgraded. Tick, tick, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate that. Yeah, so it does not have to be upgraded. The only reason why you would want to upgrade it is because that you want to get a special or a specific bonus in that system. That's weird. Never seen that event. Anyways. So, like, let's say this system here. Normally, I wouldn't... I mean, this this is a good system because it is a choke point system. So I want one here. The how this system doesn't really afford me any good. So I don't want one here. The Darling system, it's on the border of my territory. It's also one of my inhabited worlds. I could put one here. You don't want to put one everywhere. If you can afford with it, sure, why not? But otherwise, I would suggest you don't. Right now, you said that you're not in the hole when it comes to like resource generation. So maybe it's not something you need to be concerned about. But 
I would suggest try trimming down the fat. So if you have star bases inside your territory that aren't really doing much for you, then I would probably remove them. Unless that's going to have an issue. No, not a devouring swarm. Don't do it. Don't do it, please. Wreckage identified. Uh, we'll return them. Welcome back. Grab an asset? I'll try. You gotta wait now. I need more infiltration. I have no idea how strong they are. Oh, they like me. Good. Well, they kind of do. They're wary of me. They're not quite sure. I would still love to subjugate them. But according to this, the relative power is not in my favor, so they are considered stronger than I. We need more ships! Build more shippies! I'm not used to being so behind in technology. I should have done that. <sighs> Devouring Storms is just free real estate? Pretty much, aren't they? They're snails. They can't pose a threat. Trade with them a little bit. They owe me a favor. <laughs> I can't even become their subject. All right, we're now producing 29 alloys. That's okay. I would like to be producing more, but again, this is more tutorial than it is meta. We now have nearly 1,000 fleet power. Now, we are 17 years into the game. The stages at which you can compare your strength to others is easy if you go to the context list. Going to the context list, there is a sort by relative power. You can compare yourself to the other AI of the galaxy. Now, it may not give you an exact amount of... Wait a second. Did we just find out? Oh, we did. They're inferior to us! Prepare the troops! Well, now we know. So, we're going to, just as we did with the um, science ships, we're going to select our Starfleet, click Assign Leader, go to Admirals, and we're going to get this guy, the Gale Speed. Actually, Disengagement Chance would probably be better. That way, in case we do lose, we won't lose very many ships. All right, let's go to the next station. Let's go to the border. Truth is that my swarm developed a derpy look. Oh wait, hold on, I'm missing. I'm missing stuff. They first made them playable. We found one of the space station miners, like his storm is and said, prey. And will also increase his fleet strength. True. So as a former California resident, do you have any recommendations on substitute in Sacramento? <sighs> Don't visit? No, I, I, I lived near, but I hardly ever went to Sacramento. So I really actually have, like, no actual suggestions. <laughs> there are a lot of parks and other places that you, you can visit. There are some parks I could suggest, I suppose. That's really about it. That's all I got to suggest. Is it time for a while ready? Yes. Am I looking forward to cloaking? Yes, but to a point, right? They, uh, according to the description, and from what we know, is that uh, your ships, they have like a, like a cloaking strength. If you have a wide variety of ships, your cloaking strength can be really reduced, and enemy stations will have cloaking response. Now, I don't know how well the AI is gonna react to this, right? And I don't know if it's like the moment you enter, you know, it does the strength to get calculated? Is it based off of proximity? Uh, can you skirt around the system? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure what the best strategy is. But I'm interested to see how it turns out.
Go, my minions! Alright, so we're gonna go to Fleet Manager. We're gonna click on our other fleet that doesn't exist yet, and we're going to reinforce it. That way we can start building our, our next fleet. It will be either overpowered or completely worthless. Well, it depends, right? Yes, it will be either overpowered or worthless, but that's mostly when you're doing like the PvP mindset. The PvE mindset. Well, I guess, I guess both ways it could be. Yeah, it depends. Like, I don't know how the AI is going to react to it. I don't even know how they manage to program it, where the AI will either see it or don't see it, react or don't react. Anytime I've ever played a strategy game that uses Fog of War, I've always suspected the AI cheats. He just knows. He knows where you are. You can go up to 10, but only with special things. I might, like, roleplay the Romulans. Something like that. Get some cloaking tech. All about honor. Uh, sensor range. Pro tip, the A always knows. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the problem, right? If the AI doesn't build detection, it will just be an easy build cloaking ships, win game. AI can't do anything about it. You sneak past all their stuff and just go straight for their home worlds and blow them up kind of stuff. You know, cut them off. It's just it would be such a strategic advantage if the AI just can't doesn't know just isn't programmed to even deal with it. I doubt that they would release such a pro like a product without the AI being able to do something. How well the AI deals with it is really the question. The AI will likely build over time, you know, different detections as it gets, you know, as the game goes on, it will build more detection. But let's say you play on Grand Admiral difficulty. Does that mean within the first 10 years, they'll have like all of their stealth detection up? I don't know. I'm not sure. Really? Fallen Empire detection caps at eight? New technology discovered. Really now? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This this would also be a good system. However, we're currently um I mean I guess I guess I can expand. I have the resources. Situation log updated. Yes, situation logs, yes, of course. All the situation logs. Thank you, game. Thank you for make, making me aware of my situation logs. All right, we're actually really low on energy credits, like generation. I could just buy a couple more lump sums of credits. I mean, uh, alloys. Build up our second fleet, get ourselves another admiral. And then we can prepare for war. So, something I had not yet discussed, now that we've done our fleet building, or at least our fleet building is being accomplished, we need an army. Destroying systems comes down to not just the fleet, but your army. Unbidden have a detection of 10. Oh, wow. Whether your cloak is rolled against their detection? Probably. But, like, how often does it happen? Is it, like, every month they do, like, another detection ping? Maybe it's, like, a ping every month. And every month that, you know, you have, you know, you get, like, a plus roll against them because, you know, the greater the difference is. I don't know. So. Detection is static. Okay, so as long as your number is higher, you're golden. Perfect. Perfect. Will you know what their detection is, though? Is there a way to find out what their detection is? Or do you have to do espionage to find that out? Anyways, that aside, that's, that's a discussion for 10 seconds from now. Uh, so once we have our fleets being produced, now we need an army. Because once we've destroyed their ships and stations, we still need to invade their planets. So to make an army, we will select one of our planets, 
go to the army tab go to recruit and now recruit however many we need i will do three on each of our planets i'm hitting the tab button which is a hotkey in order to tab through your worlds so tab recruit tab recruit now we will have nine troops now will that be enough probably not i'm actually gonna make even more oops now keep in mind not only do they have a cost they also have an upkeep and with how many i just made i won't be able to afford them all but hopefully uh new jobs will fill in and then i'll be able to afford them so we'll see we'll see by the way you should get more assets Shatam, i have not seen you in a while how are you man Yes, let's do acquire an asset. I we still need a rework? I, I do agree with this. You speak the true true. Armies could certainly use a rework. Gaming Brain gives you out another tier one sub. This time to Shadam. And now that's 10. 10 10. 10 10 gifted subs. Jesus, man. <laughs> yes, it has been a while. Toxic, thank you so much for the follow. Yes. Um, Charlie did pass away like six, six and a half months ago now. But uh, again, he lived a very long and well loved life. So, we remember his passing with joy and reverence rather than sadness. Well, we remember his life. His passing was sad. Well, we had we just got something to commemorate him, actually. So my folks. Don't forget bombarding. Yeah, we'll talk about that, I suppose. So, uh, my folks gave me this. Let me pause the game. They gave me this on my birthday, which was just uh, last week, actually, on Wednesday. A, a, um, a canvas painting of him sitting in his favorite spot in front of the fireplace. Close enough that he'd get nice and toasty, but not not directly in front where he'd get too hot. But I gotta say, every time you'd walk over there and you'd give him a pet, your hand would feel like it's burning. And you'd be like, wow, dude, how in the heck can you withstand all this heat? But he loved it. One of his favorite things to do as well was on the mornings that I would uh, take a shower, I'd get up out of bed, and when I, you know... Go to the bathroom, get dressed, and things like that. I would turn on the space heater in my bathroom, and he would just chill in front of it. Just sit there. Just all this hot air blowing on his face. He loved it. Uh, that was, it's a printed, printed picture, yes. Jesus, you played Stellaris before? It's heavy. Yeah, well, I have, I have about, I don't know. What is this? Twenty one hundred hours? So I know I know a bit about it. I I know a fair bit about the game. I think I can say I know what I'm talking about. Although to be although to be fair, to be perfectly honest, with even though it's twenty one hundred hours and all of those were actual playtime, not just leaving the game running. Between each patch, I probably only had a couple hundred hours. Because then the next patch would come out and then the game would change and I have to relearn a lot of mechanics because stuff would be altered or new, you know, new metas would be introduced. So, you know, just because I have like 2000 plus hours doesn't mean I have 2000 plus hours in the current game. I've had that throughout its entire existence. Nah, fungoid. Fungaloid. Nah, nah, nah. I mean, I do, I do like my gestal consciousness, but... Fungus? I'm not that kind of fun guy. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. If I stream for another six hours... Actually, it doesn't count my current hours. So, uh, the hours don't update until, um, until you close the game. So, I'm pretty sure I'm already three more hours. I don't know. It, how long I can I stream today? It really just depends on how much I can physically go for. 
I'm, I'm trying. I'm struggling a little bit today. My lungs, my lungs aren't doing so well. I don't know why. Oops, that is the wrong thing. So, our fleets have been created. You'll see here down at the bottom right that I have armies. I have selected them and I use the hotkey G to group them up. Now I've also told them to go to the fleets. That way they are primed and ready in engagements. There's a fungus among us. I mean, if you've if you've been playing a game for a long time and patches come out and you kind of adapt to them as they come out, it's not that bad. But let's say, like, for example, let's say you've been playing a game, you play the game in 1.0, and now the game is 3.0. The game has changed so much that the game since the game first came out, the game could be considered Stellaris 2 or Stellaris 3 with how much has changed. Not just Stellaris 3.0 for the patch. But I mean like a wholly separate game because of how much has been altered. Alright, sorry, Ice Mage, have a good night, man. You remember to set the fleets to aggressive so they follow the fleets in Autoland? You are you talking about the um Situation These guys? Fleets will automatically follow military fleets and invade hostile plans. What? When was that added? I don't think I've ever seen that. Men armies, not fleets. I figured that that's what you were talking about, but I, I hadn't seen that before. System scan complete. So on the on the transport fleets, you can actually change them to be aggressive, where they will follow friendly fleets and invade hostile planets, if if the odds are in their favor. 3.2 aggressive but for transports. What? That's that's pretty good. Oh, naval capacity increase. Oh, we want that because we're currently over our capacity by 13%. That is inefficient. We must increase our percentages. System charted. Oh, my upload is... Man, my, I'm watching my upload, and my upload's like, you're uploading at 50 kilobytes, and then 11,000 kilobytes. And then back down to the 6,000 is supposed to be. It's just it's rubber banding all over the place. Hey, Jimbo. How are you, man? Jimbo. Is that from... Oh, man. I was going to say Jimmy Dutron, but I apologize if your name is actually Jimbo, and people make that reference, and you hate it. I'm sorry, but that's what it made me think of. Is the game fun without any DLCs involved? Yes, the game is still fun even without DLCs, but I have to say that the DLCs add so much to the game that uh, it's hard. You know what? Honestly, I can't really say. To be fair, I can't really say. It has been a long time since I played just vanilla. Whenever I play the game, even though I don't use mods, I have been given all the DLC by Paradox, and I haven't played purely vanilla ever, other than when the game was in 1.0 and it first came out. So I can't honestly give you a valid opinion. But I can say that the mechanics of the game are fun in their own right. I really enjoy the game. Would I enjoy the game vanilla? Probably. Would I play it over a different game versus playing it just with mods? I mean, not with mods, with uh, DLC. I probably prefer the DLC than just vanilla because the DLC adds a lot of flavor to the game. But again, it's it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Uncle Jimbo. How far are we into this game? 20, 21 years. Arasadi, Irasado, Eras, Eras, I am so sorry I destroyed your name. How are you doing today? Have fun with it. 
I'm sorry, Jimbo. But I love the name, though. Once you taste DLC, you'll never go back. There. Yeah. Vanilla is base game without mods. Not, oh, I see. Minor correction. Okay, so correct. I, I have played the game. I rarely use mods for the game. I play the game in its base form. But that does mean that I play with the DLCs. I have not played the game without the DLCs since 1.0, before DLCs existed. But the game has changed so much by then, it's not even recognizable to be comparable. So I can't really say, is the game worth playing without the DLCs? If it's on sale, I would highly suggest you buy it and play it. Because then you'll get a good opportunity at a fairly cheap price to try out the game. Also, for those of you who are curious about the game, if you have the Xbox Game Pass for for PC, it's there. And DLC is included. At least I'm fairly certain the DLC is included. But yeah. Give it a try. All right. Our troops, our troops are gathering. Look at these cool USB ships. <laughs> they look like USB sticks. I never actually looked at these that close. Ah, oh, it's so bright, my eyes. How are these transport vessels bigger than our Corvettes? That's just not right. One of the brilliant things about Stellaris Multi- Oh, that's true! Okay, so that is something I do want to say. For, so, for those of you who are joining us that don't know much about Stellaris or Paradox in general, Paradox has a fairly blanket DLC policy, which is whoever the host is of a game in multiplayer, whatever DLC they have, everyone else gets access to for free during that period. So, since I have all the DLC, if I were to host a community game, and you were to join me, even though you only own the base game, you would be able to use all of the DLC that I have access to. Pretty cool, huh? Do not look directly into a star. I don't know if I believe you on that one. Come on, let's all gather up. Okay, are we, are we prepared? I think so. So, here comes the next step of our conquest. We have our fleet, we have our troops, we have our admirals, and we have our generals. Now, in order to declare war, you simply click on the empire to open up the diplomacy, and then you would click on declare war. Where is that? There we go. Now, in this menu, you have to have a war goal. In a lot of Paradox games, it requires a causes belly, which is a reason for war. You need to have some reason other than just war for war's sake. That reason could be you just want to humiliate them. It could be that you want to take land from them. It could be that they insulted you. I don't know. It, it depends. But you need a reason. Otherwise, you can't declare war. All these reasons are black, blacked out. I can't because I have no reason yet. Yet. And we'll go over that. Humble Bundle often has... Yes, that's true. Humble Bundle often has Stellaris, uh, it's like once a year at least, that they have Stellaris on sale. I remember uh, they had Stellaris on sale, and it was like a dollar for the base game, for the minimum donation just for pair, like just for Stellaris. I bought three keys, and then Humble Bundle was like, whoa, 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 you can't, you're not allowed to buy any more than that. That's all you're allowed to get. So yeah. And hello Danish, Danish peasant, interesting name. Is it, is it on sale right now, other than the DLC? No, no, it is not on sale. Stellaris is $40. Hmm. It's been a while. I would suggest... Let's see here. What time of year is it? I would suggest that you put it on your wish list for right now. New DLC is coming out, but if you're still on the fence, put it on your wish list. When it goes on sale, usually it goes on sale for 60 to 70% off, or even 75% off, then it would be worth it. And if you get it early enough in the sale, you have enough time to play the game for yourself, 
and decide whether or not you really feel that the DLC is worth it to you. Yeah, it is not on Humble Bundle right now. But it, but it is often. It's at least like once a year. Interesting sound. So, now we need a reason for war. Whatever that reason is, I want to take land. So although in the 4X is, you know, explore, expand, exploit, exterminate, we don't really have to exterminate them. We could just simply take them and force them into labor camps. Or integrate them into our site. Wh whatever. Whatever is your reason. Uh-oh. Our operatives have been... Wait, have uncovered a suspect evidence... Wait, what? Our operatives have uncovered a suspect evidence and need to launch a deceptive counter. Oh. We're outraged at this! Yes! They try to do sneaky sneak stuff to us, even though we're doing sneaky sneak stuff to them. Stellaris does not feel like Stellaris without Utopia. That, I mean, there are some DLC that are so game-changing that you kind of need it. There are a couple of DLC that people argue that you need in order to really get the full experience. But is it still fun without the DLC? Probably. I haven't played it without the DLC, so I can't really say. So, let's insult them! First of all, we're going to harm relations. That's right. We don't like you anymore. And we're going to declare rivalry. Yep, now they really don't like us. Now we're going to send them an insult. The narrow-minded ignorance of the Carnesian Star di di Directorate. Oh, that was Dictorate. Directorate has blinded you. Yes, and now they hate us. Good. So we could humiliate them in a war goal. But I want land. So we're going to go to claims. Now you could manage claims from this menu here. And then choose claims. Or you could simply open the claims menu. From here on the sidebar. Claims. I'm going to claim all of your inhabited planets. Although actually I don't know if that's all you have. That is. You only have three colonies. So we're going to claim their three colonies. I will, I'll claim this one, too. Why not? Make claims. Yes! And now, when we go to war, we have conquered claim. Salt their worlds, yes! So, let's begin! Uh, oh, well, I mean, we could have vassalized them. But that's, that's not what we're doing today. We're taking them over! Declare war! All right, so now that war has been declared, we can enter their systems. Well, when I let one day tick by. There we go, now we can enter their systems. Because beforehand they had their borders closed because they didn't like us. But we don't like them either. No, you weren't superior to them? I mean, I could have, yeah, no, I, I still could have demanded it. I mean, I, I am, I am, I'm so superior to them. Anyways, uh, now that our fleets are following each other, I have my second fleet following my first fleet. And our first fleet will be on the move. So, I will tell them to go into the system and attack their station. Let's begin. We need, we need a good, we need a good song for this one. Where is the... Where's the fleet one? The Imperial Fleet. I want I want that song. It's a good song. Yes. The Ninja Turtles will have their day. Wait, the game paused. What? Oh. Some research thing. I had whatever. The Ninja Turtles will have their vengeance! I don't know what we're avenging, but we'll have it nonetheless. For Master Splinter! <laughs> there is a Sabaton music, but I mean, you can play whatever music you want. I, I have to be within the, you know, the TOS of Twitch, so... 
You can play the metal band version of Barbie Girl for all I care. You know, whatever, whatever is, you know, up to you. Fire at them! Fire the missiles! Take them out! Pew, pew, pew! Nice. Okay, now that we've taken this system, we can actually repair this system. But instead, we're going to go directly to the next system. Now, our fleets, though, I mean our transports, we're going to have you guys land on this planet. I'm going to give you a general as well. We're going to do the same method as we did before, right? You select the fleet. You click on select leader. Then you recruit, and then you select the leader that you recruited. The army's auto moved. Uh, they weren't actually selected, but uh, I could change that in a second here. Let me. Aggressive! Huh! They're doing it! They're really doing it! Oh my goodness! Technology these days, guys. <gasps> the enemy fleet! The enemy fleet is here! Let's engage them! Actually, hold on. Before we begin, is there any edicts I want to activate to assist myself? I guess not. We have seized an enemy world. We have seized an enemy world. Yeah, you run away! That's what I thought! Look at them flee! The plebles. Alright, so the station has caught us, so now we have to fight the station. Now we have to manually order? No, oh, it looks like they're already here. Push forward, men! <gasps> wait, wait, they come to us! Cortanos, they come! Alright, we're gonna wait here on the border. Let's see here. Let's let's look back into the system. Oh, they turned around! You sneaky little weenies! You can't run from us! <laughs> we'll chase you down! Now we don't want to engage them with their own um station so we're gonna enter the system we're gonna try to fight them without engaging the system i mean their station are they gonna stop us they're they're just frozen with fear they don't know what to do they're like as long as we don't move they can't hurt us their sight is based off movement. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Here they come. Here they come, men. Prepare yourselves for gold and glory. <laughs> it's like Banner Lord all over again. Shoot them. So we could slow down the game a little bit to enjoy the light show more. But nah. I wanna watch them burn! Wait a minute, hold on. Oh, okay. Yes! Alright, we have annihilated them. How many did we actually kill though? One! That's it? We only killed one? Well, okay then. Hmm.
Yeah, they did retreat here, so they won't have time to heal. I just want to give myself a little bit of time to get my shields back. So we're going to engage their station. Prepare to fire on the station! Destroy them! <laughs> Eat their children? What? What in the world? children with garlic butter? It's cargo. Kill the transport vessels. Finish them. Oh, look, our vessels are already going for their uh their home planet. They only has 72 defensive strength. So now we're going to set our fleets to enter the orbit around the starbase. That way they can repair themselves when the starbase gets fully captured. And is then re-operational. Other than that, you guys now have seen how to explore, expand, exploit, and now exterminate. Our home planet is ours! Oh man, they're not too happy about that. Uh, why aren't you repairing me yet? How long does it take for the fleet to the station to start repairing? Shouldn't take too long, right? Oh, there we go. Now it's repairing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, in in the game, in the grand scheme of Stellaris, although you can role play what you want to role play, uh, population is power. Now, out of all the resources I've spoken about so far, I have not really talked about population. Population is the units that are on your planet to work specific jobs. That is what provides the majority of your resources, whether it be science, minerals, energy, food, and whatever else you have. Population is one of the most important resources in the entire game. Now, although influence is very important and hard to get and critical to use, population allows you to produce everything else. So you need as much population as possible. So killing other races rather than integrating them into your society is highly ill-advised. If you want to roleplay it, you're like, you know what, these guys have been my rivals for forever or they're so dangerous they can't be left alive, whatever. That's, that's your roleplay, that's how you want to play but it is not advised to remove populations from the galaxy as they are very important. All right, to the next system. Joke planet capacity and how prop pop growths work is that too in depth? I would say that the population, like the, the I did show a little bit of jobs and unemployment and the and the population tab, but I didn't really go into the growing and assembling and the, a lot of that stuff. I just saved for later. I, I'm just trying to stick to the 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 usual four X's: the expand, explore, exploit, exterminate.
Now, tomorrow, if you guys want to see a lot more of the advanced mechanics that I will be utilizing, and you have questions on those, tomorrow will be the day to do that, because that's when the DLC comes out. And that's when I will be playing one of my preferred races that I might let chat name and choose the image of. Uh, operatives have been spooked. Oh well. You know, but I have to say, number one, thank you guys for hanging out today. I had such a successful uh, stream series last week and the week before. When we were doing Bannerlord, so many new viewers, it was awesome. And today, I was concerned without it being a new DLC release that I actually wouldn't have that many people here to enjoy today. But we have a lot, so thank you. Thank you for being here. If you did enjoy today's stream, whether that is the content that I'm providing in the game or my just my talking. Um, feel free to follow. That way you know when I go live next. There are plenty of other resources and games that I played. You can find on the YouTube and Discord. So, for those of you who are curious about future content, granted the rest of this week will be an interim uh, by the way i found out just like the two days ago that it's not interim it's interim as a word i totally screwed that up <clears throat> um more integration is coming more twitch integration games we have rim world which is the next series we're going to be playing friday this week i'm planning on doing a setup stream um where we're going to be modifying mods and prices and how much coins people generate things like that then we have seven days to die or arc we might do both but we'll start with one or another with twitch integration ah okay Dio. hey neil thank you for being here at lunch i appreciate that i hope your lunch is very tasty today plant capacity is such a minor bonus it doesn't really bother oh you're talking about with the uh the empire size aha we have won! We will cooperate with your occupational forces, seen as, uh, as they see to the dismantlement of our current government. It is an unforgiving universe. Yes, 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 more, more stuff, more stuff. The end of the Conistian star, the, the end of the s snail people. The Star Nation, formerly known as the Snail People, has been destroyed. You know what? Since they are eliminated, I get to write the history books. They are now known as the Escargos. Escarg going right out of this galaxy. Uh, they have been destroyed by its enemies. Yes. How would this affect the political uh, climate of the galaxy? Who knows? Who knows? But now we have a lot of upset spaghetti people. Upsetty spaghetti. Yeah, they're not very happy that I took over all their stuff. So if you completely dominate the war, uh, the game the game will have the war automatically be victorious. However, there will be an icon that you can click on that will open up the war interface, which I neglected to show you, which now I feel bad about. What was the last auto save? Oh, literally two seconds ago. All right, well that's not gonna work. I'm following for the cat avatar and the boats. <gasps> well, if it's not just for the avatar, don't forget we have an actual cat. Smokey. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Huh? What you doing? Huh? Smokey. Boop. I got you. Boop. <laughs> Ah, oh, yes. Where's the doggo? Oh, where's Rex? Oh, you want to know about Mr. Majestic himself? That'll have to be another day. Don't worry, this summer, I'm going to have a lot of dog duty. And you will be able to summon him at any time and give him treats as well. Give him some extra pats? <laughs> uh, 
Uh, what kind of dog is he? Oh, Rex? Oh, he's a German Shepherd. Heckin', heckin' gorgeous boy. I took that photo, actually. That photo? I took that photo. I'm so proud of that. Pets for Smokey. You know, we might even be able to do some treats as well. So, um, it's only been three and a half hours. Normally, I stream for four to five, maybe even six hours, depending on the stream. However, I am tired as uh, yesterday I had a very busy day. I actually worked out. Not only, not only did I do my, because I do like a bike. I do like a uh, stationary bike every morning. So I did like a good 10 minutes of, 10 to 15 minutes of stationary bike. But I actually used our Bowflex that we have and I actually worked out. I got, got to get small because I mean, just, there's not a whole lot going on here. <laughs> Don't ignore my comment. Ooh, I totally didn't ignore you. Oh, about streaming Rex tonight in Discord? Maybe. Speaking of emotes, Charlie has been s starring in an emote drop game for a week. Wait, an emote drop stream game? What do you mean? What are you talking about? <laughs> Thank you, Kiss Me Dear, for the follow. I appreciate that. Although, you'll have to buy me dinner first. I'm pretty cheap. I'll take Taco Bell. <laughs> uh, so, yes, we have Rex. We have... Uh, oh, wait, did I turn off my camera? Where's my camera? Oh, I didn't even realize I turned that off. Um, we have Charlie, who, although, although we have the photo of him, he did pass away. It was six and a half months ago. He was the mascot of the channel. That's why my heckin' symbol is Charlie. But we're going to keep those because I wish to remember him. So... It's an overlay that bowls over the stream. Viewers can pick an emote and draw, try to land them in a bowl. Huh. Yes, yeah, so for those of you who do have to go, thank you very much for being here. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you enjoyed enough to be willing to come back for more content, I would really appreciate a follow. Uh, it's, it's sad that I have to ask every time that I gotta mention it. It's, you know, the like, comment, and subscribe. But for streamers, it's follow, please. Um, I would really appreciate it. Again, you don't have to, but I will be here tomorrow with the new DLC content of Stellaris. I would like to do a Stellaris co-op game this weekend, but I'm not sure about availability for Saturday yet. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it, but I think that'd be fun. Maybe we can all play FTL Civilizations. Pre-FTL. That's what I meant. What is Charlie's? Yes! So, this is Smokey. Oops, sorry. Smokey, Smokey. So the reason why he's named Smokey, hold on, you know what, actually. Let's close that. Huh? Gaming brain? Gaming brain, I see what you did. I see that. I'll have to comment on that later, but for now, ooh, whoa, 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 get rid of that. I see what you did. <clears throat> Anyways, pay another game to go up. Oh, you talking about uh, for the weekend? Do like Vermintide or Darktide? Vermintide would be pretty good with the Twitch integration. That way you guys get to vote what kind of crazy crap happens to us. <sighs> All right, kiss me, dear. Have a good night, dear. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. So yes, um, this will be marking the end of the stream. If we want to have a quick little chat, you know, before things die down, then that's also great. Um, yes, and Ruby, that is true. We do have Ruby. We do have Ruby. Bad streamer going invisible. Oh no, am I have to add that to my bad streamer thing? I've already gotten like three bad streamers today. I can't afford any more. <laughs> Uh, nice puns about the fungoids earlier. Should I say pongoids? Yes, Lieutenant Gunny. So, thank you again, everybody, for hanging out today. If you enjoyed, feel free to follow. Otherwise, I will see you guys tomorrow in tomorrow's adventures. In the meantime, I will be raiding someone. So, if you stick around for the raid, that would be fantastic. Because you will earn channel points. And those channel points can be used to 
make me drink my water or summon the cat or give them treats or uh, make me voice a line live. As well as, as we play more Twitch integration games, you will be able to use those channel points in those Twitch integrations. However that may turn out to be. I'm not sure exactly what that's going to do, but I guess we'll find out. Um, hmm. Summon all the cats, give all the treats. Yes! Yeah, did I, is that still disabled? Did I not re-enable, give him treats? No, 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 it is. Don't redeem it now. I'm going to refund it because the stream is ending. We'll do that next time. We'll do that tomorrow when we have so many more people. That way everybody can enjoy it. So let's see who we can, who we can uh, raid today. Eat a walnut hole? Why? Why? Oh, <gasps> Dolphin! All right. So Dolphin Dive Pro is currently live. Dolphin Dive also known as Tom, is a good friend of mine. I have streamed with him a lot, and he was actually in the recent Stellaris Timelines, playing as the Car Do Consciousness. He is a phenomenal person, both entertaining and wholesome. So, we're gonna go over there, I'm gonna show him some love. A lot of you have already been gifted my Charlie Heart emote. If you don't, I'm sure you've earned enough channel points today to unlock it. So let's go over there, raid him, and show him some love. If you want to go to bed or go to someone else afterwards, then that's perfectly fine. But just stick around for a little bit so we can raid him. That way we can make his day. Alright guys, I'll see you later. Take care. Raid time. I mean, heck, you kidding me? The raid thing is broken again. All right, so you guys see a raid, a raid timer, all right? The raid timer will go off. However, normally I'm allowed to make it go early and force it to happen. That's how it works. However, you're gonna have to just wait out the timer. It will still raid. It will still raid. It's just gonna take a moment. You just see, no, you see no timer? The heck and heck, man. Hold on. Slash raid. And then we're gonna do Dolphin Dive Pro. You already have a raid in progress. You know what? Some of you have a timer, some of you don't. If you have no timer, go and feel free to click on that link. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Take care, everyone. <laughs>